Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, October 28th, 2021. The time is now 7 p.m. The first item on the agenda is to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> For anyone that is interested, there's uh, hand sanitizers and masks at the front of the room. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board through public comment, uh, please state your name and address and come to the front of the room so that the microphone can clearly pick you up. Um, before we go into public comments though, we'll go through the, the minutes and the approval thereof. Uh, first is the minutes for the September 25th, 2021 workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to approve the minutes for the September 30th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. The minutes for the October 23rd workshop meeting have not been completed, so we'll table that until the next session. Uh, next item is the treasurer's report. Really not much to add other than we've been working on the budget and uh, I have Rick Wool coming in on the 16th to help me with some issues that weren't resolved as a result of, uh, thank you, mm -hmm. as a result of the last year's audit and just some little issues I'm having with the program. So nothing really to report on that. It's just nice. Everything's nice and tidy. Um, and uh, we're still waiting for final uh, ruling on the from the Treasury with respect to the ARP funds. So nothing more to add there. Once we have that information, I think we'll be able to make a better decision as to how to use those funds and move forward with that. Okay, thank you. Next is to approve the payment of the bills for October 2021. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. Well, te technically it's me, but I'm gonna wait until the end. So I'll let somebody else go first. Fred Walter, uh, of the of Copper Beach Lane, and uh, Sun Croft Village. We have an issue with the street lights um, and have determined that at this point, the street lights were ordered by Stone Group. And in fact, the last set of street lights were signed for by Stone Group as president when they weren't, they were no longer in charge. So we have been advised by our lawyer that we should just cease payment for the street lights, turn them off and let it come to a head. The question for the supervisors is, will we be creating a problem with you if we cease to uh, put the street lights on? This may take uh, a little bit of discussion. Yeah, I but, don't. Um, our lawyer advised that this would be a way to bring it to a head. Um, as you know, they took $57,000 of bond money, not having furnished the street lights, but rather leased them. Yeah, the, the term furnished in that contract, I, this has been discussed many yeah. times before. And for what it's worth on a personal note, my heart goes out to you the way that that, that was worded was not, not advantageous for, for well, you as homeowners. The dollar amount, for each of the street lights reflect the full installation. Mm. So they totally avoided spending any money. And we have additional evidence now that um, all of the orders with MedEd were signed by landmark personnel. Okay. And, uh, trying to feel how we proceed with that. And I said, we got the recommendation, turn them off and bring it to a head. Mm -hmm. Where does that sit to the town is the question. I mean, the only thing that immediately comes to mind for me is just public safety, not having the lights on. Is there, is there any actual requirement to have? 
so just to make it clear for me, because I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that. I'm still getting acclimated. <laughs> so the, <laughs> the, the real long story short is there are streetlights in Stonecroft that by the, the letter of the agreement, they have is to be it furnished. in the village where there's the... The homeowners association it's the, area. It's yes. the homeowners that are most likely going to be traveling <laughs> along those roads. Not if there's any public going on that part, that part. They're with private. Guests. They're private roads. Private yeah, roads. Correct. I don't. If it's a private road, then I don't have an issue with it. I don't have an issue with this point. You expect to get more flack from our homeowner, homeowners than uh, anybody, but that's yeah. the first question was where would the town stand? Okay. At this point, My, yeah. I mean, I'll, I can review things but i mean if it is it the road dedicated or is it no it's, it's all now? private okay yeah i mean now. as long as there's not any legal thing my only concern would be about just general safety um and, and if there's if there's any mitigating things that the homeowners association can do to help improve visibility on those stretches even in the absence of the street lights that would be my my personal kind of request it's not a contingent not a requirement but i'd, I'd like to see maybe make an effort in that stretch but i i don't see it of anything that would stop you from doing that Okay. Fred, can we just ask everybody to leave their lights on, their, their porch lights or their front lights? Yeah, we can do that. I mean, I, uh, I'm just really thinking that's probably what I'll do. Light on the street. Yeah, I know. The way but the lights are presently installed, they're mainly installed at intersections where right. the road takes a turn. So it's more for traffic safety. Right. Mm -hmm. In 17, we went to uh, Landmark and asked them if they would consider putting in additional lights for pedestrian safety mm -hmm. and they rejected it. So we, mm -hmm. we chased that right down the hole a little bit. And there's one in front of my house, so I'll just leave my lights on out front. Yeah. It'll help anyway. Yeah, yeah. Every, every little bit, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything from, from a township standpoint that you should be concerned about. Thank you for letting us yeah. know about the situation though. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Roy, I believe you wanted to make a comment. Roy Zarman, 300 Locust Lane. I noticed on William Penn Boulevard, to several houses, residents that have put parking spots out in the right of way, right against the road. Like the paint uh, on the roads? What? Like the paint on the roads? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're referring to, Roy, the paint on the roads? No, no, I'm talking about where they paved in the right of way. Okay. Adjacent to the street to have a a parking spot up on, on top of the hill. I, I realize yeah, why they're doing it because the driveways drop off. But what's going to happen with the snow when you come along and these vehicles are parked right on the road? You don't allow them to, allow them to park in the village here mm. in a snowstorm. Are you going to notify these people of that? Or? Yeah, if it's part of the snow emergency route, then we'll have to put up notifications yeah, and is the only road that's okay the emergency. well either way if there's people paving in the right of way i'll have to take a, yeah. a swing by and, and two of them. Them. yeah yeah, yeah i know i know the residents that you're talking about so yeah. i could see one that they've dug out and it comes all the way up to the street they haven't it's, done any paving yet but there's stone that's there but they took some on the street where it's, is this because they would need a permit to um, put a driveway in yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's kind of what, what i'm concerned about is encroaching um, on the right of way like they haven't done anything as far as any paving or anything like you can see that they've dug down to stone but they haven't done anything else i want to say it's right from sheridan right before um tolby view so it's in that little strip there i only noticed the one house, the house next to lee dice is it all paved already i didn't see i didn't notice that and probably because it was paved so yeah, that's a storm water concern. yeah so everyone needs to take a drive yep and we'll take a look thank you thank you for telling thank us you. so roy yeah. thank you very much I wasn't quite sure what the one homeowner was doing. So yeah, I, yeah. I don't tend to drive that particular section yeah. tremendously often, but thank you for bringing it to our attention. Yeah. We will absolutely look into it and make sure because it, it presents a number of concerns, stormwater, snow removal, general liability about being in the right of way. We had somebody move uh, decorative boulders that were in the right of way for yeah. a very similar reason. So now that we're immediately aware of it, we will make sure that it's attended to. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I talked it's to the engineer. It's not. It's not, it's yeah, not it's 100 not. foot right away. It's it's like I think 15. It's 15. It's it's not very much down that stretch of road. It's very narrow there for the right of way. 
it's the same thing we ran into with the uh, the gentleman with the flooding there. The the right of way ends one foot after where the the pipe ejects. Um, uh, Loretta, did you have a comment? That sure. Can you come over here, Loretta, and speak in the microphone and face the board so, so okay. we can hear you? Thank you. The Thank question you. is regarding the, the person that lives back in the, the alley in the barn. There's five vehicles back there now. Sometimes you really can't drive through there. Okay. Is anything being done about that? It can be. So specifically with vehicles, the way the, the IPMC, the property management code is written is your you're only supposed to have vehicles that are either registered, inspected, or are suitably stored, whether that's putting it behind a fence, properly covering them, et cetera. Uh, and they cannot encroach upon a, an active roadway, whether that's a street or an alley. So if there's uh, an overabundance of cars back there and they're encroaching on the roadway, that's problem number one. If they're not properly stored and they're out of inspection or out of registration or anything like that, that's problem number two. So I think we as the board, the first thing that we should do is notify crafts mm -hmm. after craft. Where exactly is this? It's, there are it's, a lot of barns in town. It's behind <laughs> Daryl's, if I'm not mistaken. That's okay. the one you're talking Everybody about. Everybody knows where this is. Yeah, and it's... a year ago, I was told that, well, yeah. that this is being looked into. Uh, well, um, we sent them out. And at the time, there was not anything that was, and this is this is one of the troubles of enforcement is it's kind of a, a at time of when the gentleman from craft was out there, there wasn't any documentable problem because we had sent them out about somebody living in that barn before too. He still does. And when they went out, there was no signs of habitation. So the person either cleans up moderately well, because they actually saw the inside of the property when they, when they went out. Um, but if anytime you have a concern like that, please bring it to our attention. We'll send somebody out and look for sure. But it but lives there. Again, the there generator was generators running practically day and night. Okay, so that's that's different than before because when when they went out the last time, there was no there were no generators, there was no signs of somebody like cooking in the place, there was no signs of like them using uh, any sort of um, restroom related facilities. They in don't have one. Uh, I know. Um, so there there weren't any signs of of that style of occupancy. Yeah. If if you if you'll read between the lines, if you'll permit me that much. Um, but we'll absolutely send somebody back out again. An easy one that's very difficult difficult to move very quickly is the cars. So if there's any semblance of tidying up or anything like that, it's going to be very difficult to move a whole bunch of cars, especially if they don't run. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please call down to the office if you notice it and you know, like it's that much time between the meetings also. Yeah. And Loretta, I, th I think you have like, if you need to text me at some time, like if, if call the call the office, call me, send me an email. Like I'm happy to take things in outside of public comments. So yeah. Yeah. thank you. Okay. Are there any other public comments? Yes. Is there anybody else in the country? So there's a Stonecroft meeting. Um, I'm Jim Donadini. I live at 198 Sweet Birch Lane um, in Stonecroft. I'm the HOA president. Uh, I think, maybe, Madam Solicitor, you might be the only one that isn't aware of that. We had a meeting today with Landmark. You might have guessed that from Fred's comments, but I don't profess to speak for Landmark, but I want to present a situation that maybe you can answer. Landmark came in with a previous developer's um, plans. So Century Group originally developed a set of plans that they brought to the township and presented it after four renditions of what the plans and lots and plans would be. They ended up with a fourth set that was approved. Landmark bought those plans as were. Um, and in that light, there were two hydrants on uh, Copper Beach Lane is the main thoroughfare to the left side of the, of the development. Um, they were to be there to support refill for the fire department in the instance that they needed it. This is pre two tankers. Anyway, um, they found that they couldn't make those dry hydrants work. They said they couldn't make them work. In abstention, I believe, and none of you were on the board that would know that with the exception of maybe Roy, um, they took those two hydrants out on one weekend and put, ended up putting one of those hydrants back closer to the pond. They thought that was the solution. 
move the dry hydrant closer to the source of water. And you know, they still couldn't make that work. In one instance, um, in 2018, they did get a certification for 1142 is the agricultural standard that they were working on. And they did get a certification. That is, they operated the pumper. In fact, it was our own township that made that happen. After they had wrecked two trucks and sent them back to the shop that they came from, Marion Township actually got the the uh, system to certify, uh, uh, a dry hydrant certifies by maintaining a, a thousand gallon per minute flow for two hours. And as I say, Daryl and, and the ABLE Fire Department in Marion Township were able to do that on that particular day. That's 10 years after the development was started. We went 10 years without any certified pumper systems. And they altered what they had in the plans Figuring that it was broken, they would fix it. I think it trying to be do the right thing. Hmm. I, I don't presume any uh, fraudulent intent. But they haven't made the situation any better. Uh, se separate attempts have failed. Um, they're relying on a lot of information, but, and I don't want to quote them because that's hearsay, but they did mention that they thought that now the fire department should give them a plan. I asked them today for an, ad, uh, you know, a, an adequate plan that is certifiable and testable. I, and I don't care dry hydrants, no dry hydrants. You tell me that you can put out fires in, in our 200 homes now, 400 people at stake that have never had a certified system. Um, I, I, I want a plan before they leave. Mm. One that you will buy off of, one that they will buy off of, mm. one that the township engineer will buy off of, and your solicitor should back you up with all of that. Um, it, it's an amendment. It, it's a. I think the process would have been an amendment. Yeah. To the plots and plans. So before they proceeded. So they've uh, they've tried to do, and I won't go into too much detail for the purposes of this. But if they change something and it's not to the plan, they're going to have a hard time closing the plan out because it's not as built. You have to have an approved set of drawings, amendments. We have to sign off on in the case of fire thing i know we wouldn't it's going to be an inspection yeah as i say we engineer by it yeah, and, and i'm not trying to make a hardship for them no no, no, but, no. but that's how it works it is my anyways. responsibility <laughs> before they leave to ensure yeah. Yeah. that that is functioning likewise yeah. it's our responsibility but jim, jim mccarthy's team does go into the inspection before they'll sign off for it yes. so they're going to do that for the roads already mm -hmm. that's another yeah. piece yeah. of it yeah, yeah. So they'll yep. look at all that go ahead and share this this stuff with jim and mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Jim's the right person to talk. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure he's aware because this is not the first time the yes. whole hydrant thing has come up. But much like the roads, much like the curbs, if it's not to plan, especially if we're not satisfied with it, they're going to have to do it to satisfaction before we close out of bonds or anything. That's just, that's to put brass tacks to it. That's, that's how it works. We're, yeah. we're, yep. we're oh, done. No, absolutely. Yeah. 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 At the prior meeting, yeah. Jim even said that he would not sign off on anything unless it, it functions. And I recall mm -hmm. talking about the dry hydrants and there, there's, I believe there's two according to the plans. Mm -hmm. So he- There was redundancy, yeah. redundancy built in. The yeah, plan. he won't yeah. sign off on yeah. it unless they're functioning. I'm, I'm not a fan of single point of failure yep, anyway. No. So like the fact that there's a singular point there for something as critical as fire, whether we have one pumper truck, two pumper trucks or 10 pumper trucks, kind of not the relevant point here. Um, if you want to go down to just the, the real finer points of things, they had a plan that says to do one thing. If they didn't do it, they haven't abided by the plan. It's that simple. Well, I, we're all on the same sheet of music, I, mm -hmm. I suspect. I would offer to you that there is an adequate system for protection provided by your township. Mm -hmm. And it's your husband <laughs> aligns it around which mm -hmm. fire department will be their first, second, third, mm -hmm. and they all have tankers, and they don't need the water mm -hmm. from that pump. Mm -hmm. I, I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. I'm also aware that in the plots of plants right now, you could hold me on Monday morning. It could be Sunday. And Monday morning, you could come by my door and say, Jim, why isn't this mm -hmm. to the plant? Mm -hmm. And I would say, <laughs> yep. I spoke with you now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that that's much yeah. like any of the other open items that that gets done oh, correctly. Yeah. I, I would, can I just, just a little comment? Hmm? I, when I was the treasurer, before I was the president, I was the treasurer. We went a number of years, three years, where the lights out in front of Stonecroft Village didn't work. And they said it's just unrepairable. 
So I said, well, I'm shutting off the lights. I'm not going to pay for them. And we did shut off the lights out there. One of the new residents is just Tom, the electrician, said, Jim, can I fix those lights? And I said, no, you can't. Then I said, they're not fixing them. So Jim, can I have 24 hours to fix the lights? And in 24 hours, amazingly, those lights were fixed and have worked ever since. My point is that the dry hydrants didn't work out in Copper Beach. And I, I don't care if they're in Copper Beach. I don't care if they put them on the top of a new hill. Yeah. Make yeah, there's there's a number of things. Engineering is a very exact science, but there's things that work on paper that don't always translate to reality. That that basin that is one of the agenda items is living proof. Of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that's uh, that's living proof of that. So what one engineer may may design may work perfectly well, it may not. And it's it's amazing how willing to pursue things or how creative you'll be when you have something like your bond. That you can't close out until it's fixed so rest assured you have the support of the board to make sure that that's done right it would be inappropriate if i didn't share that they were very cooperative in the meeting today with the things they said they were going to provide. that's good i'm going to provide the board not very accurate after i get their approval i'm going to give them a set of minutes of our meeting today i'm going to give those minutes to you to but, talk about the eight transition issues that we have this winter lights is one of those I'm waiting for a sign there. <laughs> so, do they intend to fulfill the promises they made today? Because they, their past, their past record meeting, isn't that you good. You got to show me. It's been 10 years. Yep. 10 years of promises. Yeah, I've been there four, and you're right. Every promise I've heard, I'm still waiting for it. So, it, and that doesn't mean it won't happen. Uh, you just got to show me at this point. And they're going to be gone. I mean, they, admittedly, they think spring time. And I, I wish them the very best of luck with that. Well, there's, there's a lot of things that they'll need to, to get to completion between now and then. Years, they've got a, a, a busy winter. Yes, uh, that, that is for sure. Even the little things. I wanted to paint my back door. So I called and I said, I understand I have to paint it the same color. They said, yes. I said, what color is it? They said, we don't know. <laughs> I said, well, how am I going to paint it the same color if you don't know what color it is? I, I wouldn't put a lot of anxiety into that. But anyway, you have, now you have everything I need. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Dan. My question to this conversation features if Stone Group or Glenn decides, hey, all these things outweigh the amount of bond money that's being held by the township, and we're done. We decide to walk away. There's Is a... that bond money then available to Stonecroft Village to make some of those repairs that they did? That's, that's specifically the purpose of the bond money is to cover the, the cost of things that were either executed incorrectly or not unexecuted uh, during the course of it construction, whether it's a, a walkaway situation or the firm goes under. Um, in terms of other things, I would uh, very, uh, I think, intelligently defer to the to the solicitor, because well, I think that's a, a lot of lawsuit. technically held so that the, the municipality is able to step in yeah. and do that, which, well, we, which, which we would do essentially on the homeowners. But I mean, yeah, the, the question right. I had is, I'm sure there's probably legal recourse between oh, yeah. uh, the homeowners recourse. association and Stone because of the whole yeah. That whole interconnected nature between the two, that there'd there's, be some sort of breach somewhere. There's our rights, there's your rights. Let's okay. hope that they do enough, because I will tell you, they want their bond back. Yeah, well, we know they're going to want their bond back. Well, that's proposed on that contract. Right. Yeah. yeah. How much bond money are we holding? Uh, it's a little over a million. I want to yeah. say it's like 1.2 million. Yeah, they're going to want it back. It goes way beyond the amount, too. I mean, it's not their money. <laughs> Yeah. And they're going to want that money again at another site for uh, mm -hmm. project. Yep. Yep. And that company is not going to be able to give them. That. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to ruin your bond relationship so when you're you a construction know, you company. Do not, you do not. Yes, right. At the beginning of the meeting, they were very careful to point out to us that they were landmark people and that we were dealing with stone group. Stone group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not one thing the same. Yep. Okay. Do we have any other public comments? In which case, I actually, I have one. I'm going to 
take a step back from being a supervisor for a second and ask something as a resident. Um, I contacted the What's state ethics. Uh, sorry. Thank you, Sue. Uh, thir 35 Shady Cabin Circle, Peter McCarthy. Um, so I contacted the State Ethics Commission to make sure everything was was prim, proper, and through the course of proper protocol. Uh, so I have a, a written request that if you could hand them down. Um, I, as a, a homeowner, not as a supervisor, would like to petition the board to consider uh, abandoning a small set stretch of roadway at the end of Shady Cabin Circle. Um, if any of you are familiar with the, the property there, the paving goes basically right to where the kind of the driveway is, where I park my cars, and it's never been paved. It's a grass field the rest of the way down. Um, I'd like to petition to have that uh, abandoned, turned back to, to me as I own the parcel on either side uh, so that it doesn't split my property in half. It really just presents a, a complication in terms of setbacks and everything else and really doesn't actually exist except on maps. Which one, Roy? Like the, the big field? It's, it's, it abuts the large field, kind of like that. There's a gate in my fence that lines up the shady cabin. Yeah, it's, your gate's actually a little off center based on the map pins, because I, I kind of, I'll say crudely measured it out, um, but it is there. Um, and one of the things that I have in here is that if there's any need for having a, a stipulation about continued access, I'm, I'm happy to do that. But your, your parcels, both the kind of that J-shaped one and the big field, do actually touch Canal Road on the opposite side. You technically have egress there, but I'm all for being neighborly and continuing to let, let you have access to that if needed. So all it does is chop up your property. That, that's literally all it does. Yeah. And it doesn't interfere with anyone else's access to the and, road. And no, and like I said, yeah. if there's a situation where, whether it's Roy or somebody else in the future, uh, that, that gate has been heavily overgrown. Like there's there's trees on on either side of it, but if we needed to get in or you needed to come through, whether it was to, to use the gate or not, the offer still stands. Just you have my phone number, give me a call, let me know, and you're you're always welcome, whether it's to to use the the roadway or if you have to get like if a cow got loose or anything like that. Just call me, let me know. And I'm gonna something in writing along with that okay. property. Okay. So I, I guess the, the ask then would be twofold. Um, I would like just for the kind of peace of mind on that to make sure that from a legal standpoint, the, the easement is required. If it is, then we record it accordingly. Or I, I don't know if easement's the right term, but the, the right of access. Um, uh, so the right of access you're talking about documenting his right of access or you're talking about removing this? Yeah, so I want to remove that, okay. but he has he the property here. I got it. He if you guys approve it, I'll just have to do some research I as know. to how this this is documented in title. Yeah, and then and then I will see. We'll give you a proposal okay. of how that could work. But if you guys want to move forward with that, then I can do that. But you guys have to decide if you want to move forward with. Me. I don't have any problems with it. Uh, so before you do anything yeah. else, so Roy, <laughs> whether it's something that's officially recorded on the deed or something that we agree to inter party between you and I, uh, I'm happy to do it. And again, this is me as a homeowner, so I don't want any of the, the cost of doing this to be incurred by the township or the taxpayers. This would be a, a pass through to, to me to accomplish this, uh, I'll call housekeeping item for a road that has, has never really existed. Also, for the record, I will recluse myself from all voting around this. I would have to do so yeah. anyways. Yeah, thank you. I'll need you guys to vote as to whether or not you want me to proceed with figuring this out. Make a motion. Yeah, no problem. I'll make a motion to go forward with. I just think how to word this. To what? No, well, it's not no, just title no, research. No, it's a bunch it's of stuff. <laughs> how about a preliminary approval subject to legal and engineering? Say that you. louder yeah. and slower. Yeah. <laughs> What? I was going to recommend your language. Oh, thank preliminary you. Preliminary approval subject to legal and engineering review. Okay, no problem. And review and approval final documentation. All right, I'd like to make a motion to review the property listed as 35 Shady Cabin, 
subject to preliminary legal and engineering review to eliminate a road that seems to only exist on maps that bisects Peter McCarthy's property. Second. Roll call, Peter. Abstain. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Yeah, I ran before we. Uh, I'll speak louder. Thankfully, we have enough microphones. I think we can still get you, but it's getting a little dim. Yeah. Oh, no, I got it. Yeah. Well, I took, I, in fairness, I took the back. So it's too fast. There are no more public comments at this time. We'll move into the main items for discussion. First item is the Stonecroft infield sinkhole. This basin was made deeper, but it is not currently draining. The, uh, the residents have started referring to it as a, a lake rather aptly. Uh, Stone Group has started bringing in equipment. Jim, you've been kind of our, our eyes and ears on, on that one. Um, have they actually started any major work on that or the sinkhole? Not that I've really noticed. Uh, they have taken some heavy equipment on the roads they're not supposed to be on, but I haven't really seen anybody over there doing much. Fred does. Okay. They did open up uh, the area where they got pipe embedded and stone on top and apply another lift of stone until they were probably four inches from the surface. I believe applied some fabric and soil on top and a plant of seed. So they, at this point, we questioned them this morning in our meeting. They have, uh, and we haven't been privy to it, been, been in contact with the county for a solution to the problem. It appears to be a controlled release solution because they have acknowledged that the permeability of the ground is unsuitable for the original design plan. I question how the control released anything more because our main pond is a controlled release. Uh, did not get an answer to that. But at this point, they believe they finished up their, uh, their remedial work. Uh, they had not put in originally a drain valve that the original specification said after 70 new hours could be open to allow standing water to drain. And we went to check on the last rain. Um, so Gary reported that there was a little bit of water, but it went in the way very quickly. And I discovered that the drain valve had been left open. So, uh, I was intending to close the drain well before this next one inch rainstorm and see what the net result is. Uh, but at this point, they believe they've they've got a solution. Uh, what I don't understand, but they've got one. Okay. Well, we'll keep a close eye on that one. And that one's another where whether it works on paper or not, we're not going to be satisfied and close it out until we actually see it in action. So and then separately, they talked to what we call the sinkhole up on William Penn. We had a settlement. They said they dug out and they found some debris that was decaying. They didn't say it was a body. <laughs> 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 they dug that out, supposedly rebuilt it, and are ready to pour concrete on that slab or replace the slab they took out. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. We don't have anything else on that. We'll move on to the next item, which is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, the project is in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County, with approximately 1.4 acres extending into Marion. Uh, we are awaiting Mary, or excuse me, Wolvesdorf Borough to do the traffic study. Um, so I know I've not seen any emails about that. Have you gotten anything? Through the, okay. We're reading on so, study, okay. And then it's a review of that study. So, but Jim, Jim will know when all that's going on. Okay, so at this point, we're in kind of a holding no, pattern. As soon no, as we have I, anything. I, my my thought is it's not going to come in until we're closer to a more clear plan of what's actually being built. Because from my understanding, the only <coughs> thing that's been approved is a very, for a very small portion of a building. And they were still figuring out if it was going to be three buildings, two buildings, where they're going to be. And 
that also changes how much traffic there's going to be. Mm -hmm. so, and the type of traffic. Well, they are doing some core driven up on the hill. Yeah. So as we hear anything, we'll we'll absolutely share, especially in the public forum. They're, and and we're definitely going to be doing some environmental tests right now. I would that would they, they're definitely going to be doing that right now because they're not going to proceed with the plans and the cost of the plans if there's issues with the environment. I know that much. Otherwise, talk to Jim. <laughs> okay. Next up on the agenda is the Act Five Thirty Seven. Our next step, uh, whether we're pushing forward on the plan or not is to do an income study. This will arm us with a, a lot of quality financial information in terms of feasibility. Uh, we have been in prior months working with uh, someone who was referred to us by McCarthy Engineering, and we're going to continue to try to get that together. Uh, we have a letter that is going to go out regarding some just general newsletter items, as well as the on-lot management ordinance. Uh, we've been working with Alan Madeira, who's our SEO, uh, about kicking this program off in earnest in January. Uh, we have a couple of minor edits to make to the, the letter uh, before we can get it all printed and sent out, which we'll hopefully be doing in the next couple of days, um, which come after a, a conversation I had with Alan uh, two days ago uh, regarding just the timetables and the overall fee, um, which is kind of a segue point to the, the next thing. The original fees that we had under Gary are a little on the low side by comparison for most other SEOs, Alan included. Um, the suggestion from Alan was to set it at uh, basically $200 for the course of two years rather than $100 uh, to be put on the tax bills uh, $50 a year. Um, that way, it's pretty much a guaranteed payment. You don't have to worry about hunting people down for the purposes of the inspection. Uh, and it's uh, a little easier to deal with in that respect. Um, we will have to change fees by resolution in order to do that. And uh, Courtney, I know we were going back and forth in email a little bit. The question was on how the ordinance is worded. Um, would we have to amend the ordinance around the initial pump out? Because that's like, so there's the, one small section the in there about that. Yeah, the initial pump out was, I think the longest deadline was like three years. And then after that, it was no less than four years. Has the initial pump outs not been completed that you're wanting to extend that? Because especially yes. in like the pandemic, I know. Okay, so that will require an amendment to the ordinance. That should take long. I just need the time frames. And then do you guys want to keep the minimum time period yeah. after and the initial one to be four years? Yes, Every okay. everything else we're perfectly okay with. It's just in terms of it being proper, correct, and really enforceable in, in the, the strictest sense of the word. We want to make sure that if we have to amend anything, that we, we do that so that it is proper and enforceable. I just need the new timelines that okay. we need it for, and then we should be able to get that draft to you guys very quickly and then able to advertise it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, will you guys want to have the income study completed before we revise the ordinance? No, no, no that's, that's related, but not directly connected. To the ordinance. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Yep, we can get that done. Okay, so we'll get the timelines over to you like yep. today or tomorrow. Yeah. Whether it's me sending it tonight or me or Sue sending it tomorrow, we'll, we'll send it over. Yeah, I'm not, just, I'm not drafting an ordinance tonight. Forward that email. <laughs> I'll forward that email. Okay, fantastic. Um, the only other thing to, to note is we're sending a letter out. Alan is going to be sending uh, an official one from Burks and Biotech, which is the, the firm that does the sewage enforcement now, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, roughly around the Thanksgiving and Christmas time kind of time frame. So we'll have a, a nice friendly letter from the township and then a nice friendly letter from the SEO letting people know what, what to expect over the mm -hmm. next couple of years. If you guys hang out a little bit after the meeting, I'll just change those few lines. Yeah, and then we can yeah, sign, we'll it. sign it again. Yeah. yeah, and when when after you go to print, Paul comes down here help you get things out. Yeah. I think Kelly volunteered to help too. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you. So if I take it to JVM, yeah, it should yeah. be as uh, time consuming. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well yeah, yeah you still need help folding and yeah. stuffing yeah. in envelopes yeah. and things like that. But yeah. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Thank, thank you all you for coming. Thank take you. care. Nice Good night. Next on the agenda is to set the date and time of the reorganizational meeting for the Board of Supervisors. Uh, we set this on Saturday at the workshop meeting. It has to be on January 3rd, 2022, which is the first Monday in January, and we have we have to advertise this. Uh, the, the only thing I'm going to tell you is we do we are down a person in our our team. Okay. Andy will not be probably coming to meetings that yet that, okay. by that point. So. Um, 
everybody has decided to have me be excited thing. Okay. And not direct that date. So I will do my best to be the one who covers this side of the county. If not, I will send uh, Bradley Davis from my office. You guys are just okay. doing New York. So I'm yeah, not it's it's just reorg. Honestly, I don't know if. Reason. Yeah, so I don't think Andy. Okay if I don't no, you're you're fine. We don't normally have. Yeah, we don't normally have the solicitor or the engineer. Okay. So you're you're Thank you. You, you get a you get a pass. Thank you. That's a very nice Christmas present. Thank you. <laughs> Same thing every year. Yeah. I'm, running, I'm running around that day all over the place. Yeah. So thank you. And, and with that said, we have motions on Saturday to set the meeting for January 3rd, 2022, which is required at 7 p.m. in Marion Township building. Uh, we also uh, motion to advertise it. So that's going to be advertised sometime in the near closer, very near future. Closer to the yeah. Are, you, are your plans for 2022 to maintain the schedule you're currently maintaining mm -hmm. for your general meetings? Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, try to keep it simple whenever we can. Thank you. Um, next is to set the date and time for the reorganizational meeting for auditors. Uh, this has to be on January 4th, the day following the Board of Supervisors reorg meeting, and it also has to be advertised. We have motioned on Saturday to set that meeting date for January 4th, 2022, also at 7 p.m. here in the Township Building, and to advertise. Again, closer to time, that will be put in the paper. Uh, next, we're entering into the 979 William Penn Boulevard flooding situation. There's really no news there. We got the preliminary drawing. The homeowner actually wants to install at, at their expense a pipe, uh, kind of an extension to the one that the township has that directs the water uh, around their home and into a settling basin on the rear side of the property. Um, until they do some additional work with like their engineer and our engineer, there's really nothing that the township has to do. Um, because of the nature of that pipe and the right of way and everything that, that goes along with that, it there really isn't anything that we can do short of if we wanted to try and clean out the pipe. But um, if either of you have driven by and seen it, that pipe is well below grade at this point. They've been, I don't know if it was that gentleman or previous homeowners, but people have been slowly filling in that area where it used to be kind of a divot or a swale there. There is not anymore. So until something is done around that, even if we tried to clear out the pipe, like we like water jet it from the opposite side, it has nowhere to go. And this is one of the things that he sees problems with when it collects and there's water moving through that pipe is it's like a garden hose that you've stuck your finger over so we we extended the offer and made the the uh, the reach out to him about getting a temporary construction easement jim was the other jim uh was talking to him about that and that's when he expressed the interest and supplied the preliminary plan about doing a, a, a subterranean pipe rather than something that was water managed on the surface so Right now, we don't have anything to do with that. We just have to wait. We're going to keep it on the agenda so that when there is something to do, we can do it. But at, at this point, eventually, we'll have to dig up the road and lower that pipe so that he can connect to it. No, actually. So the way he, the way they had proposed to do this was actually the pipe is pretty much at grade already. It would just be a situation where there'd be a little bit of a kind of a forty-five, mm -hmm. and then whatever grade he had the pipe at for draining around the rear side of the property. So it's, it's a very simple matter to connect to the pipe. Okay. It's actually a, a build up in a slight bit rather than a reduction. Um, but there's really only two courses of action. We either get the construction easement, dig it out and put a settling basin into the, the, the person's property line a little bit, uh, or he goes the route that he wants to, to do, which is putting in the pipe. Okay. So we're, we're prepared either way, but they want to they wanna pursue option two at this point. Next up on the agenda is the Berks County Department of EMS, the statement of costs for 2022. Uh, if we do not authorize the new agreement, it's subject to a 6.5% increase, totaling $21,546.10. Uh, uh, if we authorize the, the agreement, however, the cost would be $20,231.07, uh, which is actually the next agenda item, uh, which is the Berks County EMS Dispatch Services. Uh, we have been paying fire, police, EMS uh, dispatch fees to the county annually, subject to annual increases without limit limitation. Uh, and they're solely uh, decided at the Berks County Commissioner's discretion. Um, they have decided to fix the annual fees subject to increases based on the inflation index going forward. 
Uh, they do require us to adopt a resolution and execute the new agreement to provide these dispatch services before December 31st, 2021. Uh, Courtney, I believe you have documents yeah, ready for so us. I need you guys to adopt the resolution authorizing um, the Board of Supervisors, you, to uh, enter into the intergovernmental agreement with the um, County of Berks to provide consolidated dispatching services to Marion Township. I have that resolution. I also have the actual agreement to provide the dispatch services that once you adopt this resolution, I can also provide you to sign. Okay, so we have two total that we need to do resolutions for. Do we, we have, have this is the first resolution yep. and then this is the agreement you signed okay the second Thank resolution you. i have for you is not related to this okay agenda okay. Item. okay so just two I, I guess i got you i was just making sure there wasn't two separate oh you know yeah, no you know. because this resolution is the motion for the agreement okay okay so we just have to adopt the resolution then okay thank you okay cool do you need me to repeat myself i know i speak quickly. you need motion okay, okay. so we'll motion to adopt the resolution yeah. is that do we have a number for that one yeah, the re next resolution is 2021-5. Okay. Um, does anybody need Courtney to repeat any of that? <laughs> so okay. long story short, we have to adopt uh, the fee schedule by resolution. And there's actually another resolution, which is the next item for a stop sign. Um, but uh, I was just making sure there wasn't two resolutions by the nature of the couple of things that are involved in like the police, fire, and EMS. Um, so I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2021-5, which is the Berks County EMS dispatch services. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Do you guys sign during or do you wait till the end? We can do it at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll just... Everybody's different. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I think we'll just, we'll, we'll keep up the momentum here and then sign a bunch of stuff towards the end. Um, next is the Spur Road and School Road intersection. The asphalt has been laid down. Uh, there was a stop sign that was placed, uh, and uh, we need an ordinance to make it 100% official. Courtney has the ordinance. I do not have it with me. Oh, you do not? Okay, no, I apologize. I didn't I thought have you a did. chance to draft it, and it was not advertised for tonight. Okay. Um, sorry. It's okay. Too, too much juggling at that one. So. It's okay. So it needs to be advertised. Yeah, can we? It will need to be advertised for the next meeting. So I will get a, um, I'll probably have Bob read you a draft of it and we'll make sure we have the dimensions correctly. Um, and we'll send that over to you. Bradley's the associate who I did had yep. do that research for you guys. Okay. Thank you. Okay, in which case, we won't do that one. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. Okay, next is the culvert at Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. Uh, McCarthy Engineering had provided a cost estimate of $91,539.37 to replace this culvert, predominantly using our road crew for most of the labor. Um, we had been under the impression that we were awaiting permits for this project. Uh, that was one of the more recent updates from McCarthy Engineering. However, from one of the representatives at McCarthy, Spencer, uh, apparently, since the original permit was never acted upon, it does not have a true expiration date. So this is actually something that during the course of finishing out 2021, we could look at starting to do work on that particular culvert. Um, so I'll be over the next couple of days or so connecting with Butch and Kevin and some of the other gentlemen on the road crew to determine what the, uh, the next steps are in the process now that we do actually have a, a valid permit for this particular okay. project. So that one did go through the, yeah. the well, 91,000? Yes. Okay. Was, was, uh, I believe so, yes. That was the one that we were pretty much ready to go on. And we were just uh, kind of waiting for, I think it was BCCD funding potentially on it. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get the grant that year. So money was the only the only stopping block on that. And now that we've decided to just do it ourselves, there's really nothing holding us back. Um, the other two, on the other hand, we are still waiting on things like the bog turtle study, well, the, the GP7. Was flagged for bog turtles. Yeah. Because okay. uh, I guess when the guy came out to check a couple of cover areas. Yeah. So one one out of the four of them has that done. I don't think the other two, like the one on Reichert and the other one on Marion, I don't think they've had the bog turtle study done Absolutely. even. Um, but I don't know. Jim, but, would, Jim would know. Yeah. Bo bottom line is we actually have a valid permit for that one. The permit requests, the GP7s are in for the other three, and we know they're not going to be done until at least January. Um, not to mention anything else like any bog turtle or uh, other environmental studies that have to be okay, done. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Good, good valid you. question. Thank you. But um yeah, we actually have a, a situation where we're going to be able to act sooner than we had thought on that. So that's that's good news. 
Um, in like fashion, the other culvert on Marion Drive north of School Road by Oscar Manbeck, uh, a cost estimate for this was provided at $59,423.79 to replace. Again, predominantly using our road crew for most of the work. This one is waiting for the GP7 permit, and that's anticipated at January sometime at the earliest. Um, Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover's Farm is the same situation. Uh, and the culvert at Reichert Road is, is also in, in similar turn. We're waiting permitting. So we're looking at a couple of months duration then. So I guess as, as we're rolling along, once these bills come in, we'll have to be cognizant about transferring funds from yes. savings into the checking account. So just to, as, as, I guess as soon as some approval comes through, we know what the money's gonna be, just keep it on. Yeah. yeah. In the case of the, the first one, we have enough to cover the, the culvert at Marion right. Drive. Um, right. And it, realistically, if we get that one done before the end of the year, like even if we started like yes, very yeah. soon, it's once um, we get to the culvert on Sheridan Road. Yeah, that's when that's when we have to start yeah, moving money. Everything's used up. Yep. Is there a contingency built into those numbers? No. I mean, there's there's <laughs> nothing majorly hard on that one. So if we yeah. have to go up, we have to go up. We just have to be yeah cognizant and respectful of you know the total cost figure but we realistically we're going to find ourselves where we have to run another piece right. of equipment or get some more stones or something or you know you always find things when you start a project that aren't originally intended but and um if these come in after the final treasury rules mm -hmm. then we, we could understand that we could use some arp funds to replace southeast culverts so that would kind of take the we kind of offset of it yeah yeah we we've fully budgeted for the the actual mm -hmm. amount but there, you got to always assume there's going to be a little wiggle room one way or the other. Okay. Generally, it's always up, not down. But Financially, we have between yeah. checking and savings, we have enough. And then the turn back allocation comes in and then liquid fuels comes back in. But we know there's a $15,000 shortfall with that mm -hmm. as of next year. So okay. Next is the Tulpahawken police contracts, uh, an addendum to the agreement, uh, which expires December 31st, 2021. Um, um, I've sent that over and then followed up with another email to the solicitor for Tulpahawk and I'm not getting a response. So okay. I'm going to call and bug tomorrow. Okay. Because um, we need to adopt that in the next month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have their meetings more towards the beginning of the month. So that's so why that I'll bug. Yeah, that's okay. I'll bug. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is the Eagle Disposal contract. This is a three year contract which expires March. 21st, 2022. Uh, there is an option to renew for one year and an option to renew for a second year, totaling five years. For years one through three, residents pay quarterly a fee of $50.40 for trash, $16.80 for recycling, totaling $67.20. And for years four, quarterly fees of $52.65 for trash and $17.55 for recycling, totaling $70.20. And for years five, the quarterly fees are $54.90 for trash, uh, and $18.30 for recycling, totaling $73.20. Uh, they have provided a free trash and recycling tote as part of their kind of a agreement that we have presently. Um, in the past, Andy drew up some documents and McCarthy Engineering posted it on PenBib. Um, at the workshop meeting, the, the interest was expressed about putting out a, an RFP for trash services to see where um, where costs lie and if there is a, um, let's say, better service or for a similar price point, because we have had uh, a lot of complaints. Okay. Um, and that's actually one of the, the things that I wanted to segue into is we've had a number of complaints and one of them, uh, Sue supplied the, the recycling numbers um, I, yeah, I did a, I did a, yeah, I did a, a, a brief analysis of this and we've been with the exception of April and July, we've been trending down. We've been statistically always below the average for the past basically year, like 12 months. Um, last month was exceptionally low at 5,620 pounds compared recycling. for recycling. Yes. Uh, compared to September of this, uh, this prior year, 2020. Uh, with 11,790. So it's basically half. Um, I know my use habits for recycling haven't changed that much. I don't think most people's have not either. Uh, that coupled with the fact that we have received numerous complaints about trash trucks dumping recycling in with the trash um, leads me to believe that the, the measurements are correct. 
and that they're they're not actually recycling stuff, which does negatively affect us from a, a recycling grant standpoint. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so uh, I'll, um, I, I'm sure we can do the RFP. You're pretty mm -hmm. much wanting the same thing that you have currently? Correct. Okay, that should be pretty easy for us to check. I'd like out. to check the, um, the, the, the RFP. number of um, properties. Okay. I don't think it's accurate. Okay. That was, because when we first started with Eagle, I got a lot of phone calls saying they're not picking up the, my trash. And then when I checked the list, yeah, the people were. Well, let's let's double check before yeah. we actually put it out to RFP. But I, I want to see where we're at. My my fear is that we're we're going to see very high numbers right now in terms oh, of the yeah. service cost. Yeah. Um, you're going to have complaints. Have you, have you talked to any of the adjacent municipalities about yeah. what they're paying? Because I did. I know, well, most of it pays eighty nine dollars a quarter. I, yeah, so they have a collective. They do it with Warnersville and Robinsonia, mm -hmm. and I did theirs. And when we went to do that contract, which they are, they're very happy with their service. I want to make that very clear. They are thrilled. I don't think I've ever heard so much happiness at that meeting, except for about trash. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, but yeah. but when we went through that process of doing the request for bids. Uh, we had to actually adjust what was being collected for recycling because glass was more expensive mm -hmm. to recycle mm -hmm. than it was to produce. And um, also what plastics were now being purchased where it became actually worth recycling mm -hmm. had changed so much that the bids were much, much higher than anybody expected. So I would recommend going around and at, at least finding out what we're looking at i'll i can prepare it just you might want to be prepared for the sticker shock okay. yeah then that's that's honestly my fear from the last time we did this is eagle came in significantly lower than everybody else most of the other people were in the order of almost twice the I'll, amount. I'll also compare and then reach out to you guys as to if, you know what recyclables you guys had that the other ones we were told we had to take off in order for anybody to actually put a bid on it just so we're not putting something out where nobody wants it. Mm -hmm. We're conscious of the market because unfortunately the market's changed a lot when it comes to recycling. Yeah. I mean, I think it changes pretty much every year, every month, even depending on what time of the year it, it is. Had a, it had a significant change because most of the plastics get sold to China mm -hmm. and, and they, they restricted what they're willing to take now. So that changed a lot of things. Okay. So I think the, the first thing is we want to work on that at RFP. The second thing is we want to get legal insight and input on what we can invoke on the current contract for non-performance, okay. um, specifically around the, the number of documented complaints that we have, uh, as well as the um, apparent failing to properly collect recycling, which is a, a huge component of that contract. Mm -hmm. It's in there. Yeah. I'll take a look. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything additional from either of you on this? I washed them like a walk the other day. <laughs> <laughs> they sent around two trucks. Well, they, uh, I actually texted yeah. Sue because it was like basically three in the afternoon. Yeah. And I'm like, they still haven't gotten my, my garbage Sorry. yet. And then within like five minutes of me sending that text message, yeah. it came down. But, um, uh, well, e the one question you might want to ask is Eagle going to leave their toters? They will not. They will mm. not. They're going to. Yeah. Them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they. I'm sure they will not. But that's not. That's yeah. not the end of the world. Some, some, some just let them go because it's not worth taking them back. Yeah. So that sometimes by removing that from your. I mean, if if they and do, then, and then people who move in then go to Home Depot and do it because my yeah. my contract, I I had to go buy my own. I suspect they wouldn't, but if they do, awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Semicon Centennial for the Commonwealth of PA in the USA. Uh, this is for July 4th, 2026. Uh, we received an email from Paul Jansen at the CELG. They would like all municipalities in Berks to pass a resolution supporting the PA Commission for the U.S. Uh, Semicon Centennial. Uh, according to Paul's second email, we may or may not dis decide to directly participate, but are not required to participate. Uh, Courtney, I believe you, one of the, the homework items you had was to give I us some additional detail on that. I and have the resolution. So the resolution is simply that you're supporting the celebration by the county to uh, to celebrate in 2026. And so uh, you guys are not required to put any funds towards this. You're welcome to have a celebration. I think 
after talking with some other clients, I think they're most likely going to have local flower companies participate, maybe in a parade that's more in the center of the county or something like that. Um, but you're simply supporting it. Okay. And it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way I could describe yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're, endor it's, you're endorsing the America 250 PA celebration. Yeah, because they have a okay. fancy name. So I just I'd need you to adopt the resolution that we have prepared for you. Okay, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2021-6 supporting the Berks County celebration of the semi-consentennial for the PA and the USA. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendments. Uh, this is for Robazonia Borough to designate a convenience store <clears throat> with fuel pumps as a separate distinct use in the town center highway commercial general industrial and light industrial zoning districts. Uh, this will also provide use specific regulations, including parking, vehicular circulation around pumps, placement of ventilation equipment, setbacks for fuel pumps, maximum number of pumps, et cetera. The convenience stores and fuel pumps must be owned and operated by the same entity and no repairs may be conducted on site. Our planning commission recommends that the board of supervisors accept the amendment conditioned upon the resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission comments. Uh, for North Heidelberg Township, there, there are apartments in their medium density residential district uh, with a minimum lot, uh, average lot area of 7,500 square feet. We have not gotten any comments back from the Berks County Planning Commission. However, our planning commission recommends that the Board of Supervisors accept this amendment condition upon resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission comments. And then finally, for Ber Heidelberg Township, a change uh, in their parcel for agricultural preservation district to medium density, uh, medium density residential district. Uh, this parcel is 25 acres with an address of 620 William Penn Boulevard. It is located in both Marion Township, 14 acres, and Heidelberg Township, 11 acres. The portion in Marion Township is already zoned as medium density residential. Berks County Planning Commission has reviewed this. Our Planning Commission has reviewed and also recommends that the Board of Supervisors accept this amendment. Um, the next Joint Planning Commission meeting is Thursday, uh, 11 18 21 which they actually yeah, rescheduled 30, to the 30th, 30th. um yeah i was <laughs> work, i was i was working through my notes there so it's it's now on 30th um jim and i bare minimum will be there we have to have quorum so irene if you can attend as well that would be great otherwise jim and i can can nail it down okay so uh, you need motions to, do they need motions tonight to do this have we gotten the recommendations from joint thing do you know why don't you just motion just to cut just it what? Just to but yeah but i mean have we gotten the recommendation back from the uh the other planning commission or county planning commission i would say subject to okay for the ones that will yeah our our, our our planning commission has recommended well, that you accept all they've them. recommended that we accept that so condition upon the resolution of the Berks yeah, county so planning whatever commission. it says there just do that okay so okay. I'll, I'll make a total of three motions sue uh, first motion, I'll motion to accept the Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendment for Rabazonia Borough, subject to the approval or, and resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next motion, a motion to accept the joint zoning ordinance amendments for North Heidelberg Township regarding the medium density residential district adjustment uh, subject to the approval and resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And then finally, uh, to make a motion around the joint zoning ordinance amendments for Heidelberg Township regarding their change in parcel for the agri agricultural preserve to medium density residential uh, subject to the approval and resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye.
Okay. Next item on the agenda is the rental inspection ordinance. Uh, so there were a number of samples that were sent out. Mm -hmm. And before we dive headfirst into that, uh, just as a, a, a reiteration of this fact, just so that everybody understands this, this is not something that is going to be imposed on individual homeowners. This is not something that you as a homeowner have to worry about having somebody come in and inspect your property every two years. This is solely if you are renting a property out for profit. If you are treating that property as a business and you have tenants, this ordinance is to be, um, to be put in place. We're looking to do this so that there is a, an additional level of protection for people that are entering into that agreement. And it's all basic safety things. Um, there's nothing really wide reaching on that. It's making sure that you have smoke detectors in the home, that you have GFI outlets in areas that are a, a shock hazard, like in a bathroom, that you don't have a, a toilet that's running, that you don't have mold or, or a leaky roof. It's all basic safety things that you should as a good landlord be doing. But unfortunately, so something that you should be doing isn't always the thing that everybody does. So with that said, this is not something that your average homeowner is going to ever see. This is just, if you are a landlord, this is something that will eventually happen in order to protect people that are residents in the township. Um, Irene or Jim, is there anything yeah. that you'd want to add in addition to that? No, um, Sue was kind enough to uh, find us a bunch of other ordinances from other townships and boroughs. So I'd like to kind of take all that information, set it all out, kind of combine it. Um, that would tailor more to what our needs are and come back uh, with it because there's a lot of information on some of the other ordinances, which I think would would be nice as far as our, our format and our needs are. So I, I haven't gotten a chance yeah. to do a full red line yeah. on the group that, that Sue sent over. And I, I want to do that before yeah. we move forward. But as we had talked about last time, the goal here is to not make something that is going to be um, overly burdensome or cumbersome. It's, yeah. it's purely meant to be a tool in the toolbox to yep. make sure that we can help people or protect people. Yep, safety and welfare, that's all that, it, that, it, that it's about. So, And also you might want to go on Craft Code's website mm -hmm. and check, click on their rental, I forget what it's called, rental inspection, absolutely, mm -hmm. checklist or whatever they call yeah. it. And that was kind of helpful yeah. too. So uh, if, if, if you guys are okay with that, I'll do what I did last time with the noise ordinance, just click collectively put things mm -hmm. together type it up and I'll send it out as a Word document and have that ready before our next workshop meeting. And this way we can kind of tailor it to our needs because there's some, there some other interesting things in, in the other ones. So and thank you, sir. Yeah, thank very you, much Sam. appreciated, Sue. Thank you. Yeah. And I guess it's getting back to you, Courtney, then like how does it affect our rules for hotels or motels in the area? That was one of our biggest concerns. Well, if they're, I mean, it depends on what you define as a rent, rental. So if you have a long-term uh, you have a long-term resident at a hotel, then, you know, they might fall within the terms of your rental inspection ordinance. Um, a, a nice contrast of that is I did work front desk of a hotel back in law school. And I do recall that if somebody was there for more than 30 days, they were no longer, we were no longer allowed to, uh, they were no longer subject to the occupancy tax that hotels have to apply. And so does Airbnbs. So, Somewhat similarly, if it's over 30 days, they're, they're not treated the same way under the state tax rules. That might be if it's over 30 days. We have a lot of people at the, the motel in Marion Township that are residents for longer than 30 days. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, and then that's one way. Um, and then I've, I, I did a little bit of look. I did not get a chance to look at if Berks County does any inspections of hotel properties. Okay. Um, but I know that in many counties, it's done at the county level, and then hotels and cities tend to have their their own ordinances. But they're they are hotel specific. Um, but most of those hotels that you're seeing in the cities tend to be ones that are part of franchises where they are they have certain minimum standards. Okay. Yeah, just if it's if it's a health concern, if there's health concerns, then. There's, there's health and safety mm -hmm. concerns. Yeah, and this, if, there's, if there's any legitimate health concerns, then there are, they don't serve food there. But, you know, if you, there's other health concerns, that's, that's something that, you know, there are appropriate mm -hmm. authorities for that. Um, but it's not like they're getting a health inspection from, because they're like a restaurant or something. So it's a, it's a unique mm -hmm. situation and they're not a franchise yeah. where they would have internal inspections regularly. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, but I didn't get a chance to look to see if Brooks County kind of already does what we need them to do or, and we just need to simply call the appropriate office. Um, I suspect they might, yeah, we, we, but I we think know. the yeah. majority, I have to say yeah. the majority of hotels, I think, and motels in Brooks County are part of the franchise yeah, or with one of the hotel groups. So I think the, the first question is is this a situation where we can use the same stone for two different birds? And if not, is there, I think you should, that we can... I think you should focus on your rental inspection ordinance for yeah. the, for the traditional mm. residential tenant, focus on that. Um, and what protections you want for that. And then I can look to see about the hotel stuff. If there's okay. something more specific, um, because if you have people who are there for more than 30 days, you have to almost prove that. And if they don't have, if you don't have that, that's where it becomes kind of difficult. You guys know it, gotcha. yeah. but um, I think in general, focus your, when you're drafting the inspection and it's focus on the tenants that are in single family homes. Things like point of the board wanting this rental inspection ordinance is because that it's it's not solely because of right. that kelly it's yeah. it's a yeah. it's it's, it's a, a thing that shines the light on a particular flavor of problem that yeah. we could face and that and that by them drafting it as though it's not just for the motel they can i when you guys yeah. go to draft it it's going to end up applying as long as it's over 30 days depending on how they define it but I, what i will say is when you do look at these these rental inspection ordinances, they contemplate more potential issues and are conscious of more issues than a motel room would have. Because you do have stairs, you do have the porch light, you do have outdoor things, things like that, that if you do have somebody renting a single family home or an apartment are just as concerning as this motel. Yeah, and, and you, you, you might not have that many residential properties right now that are being uh, rented, in Marion, could. but you might we you're gonna, you, that doesn't mean you're not going to have more, especially if you do have development going on in an adjacent township. You could see the residential market here really blossom, and you should be prepared for that before it happens. Yeah, not to mention when we do something like this, it's not to single any one thing out. It's to address essentially a problem. We may have one particular place or places that that present a use case, but it, it's certainly not to single them out. It's to make sure that we don't have that problem for them or for anybody else going have forward. Talk, have you talked to Kraft at all about, have they gone over? I don't recall. Yeah. Okay. They've done they've gone over early on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I actually asked you a question. If you have a tenant, let's classify as a motel hotel, and you have some days living there for like a month at a time or more than a day by day basis. Mm -hmm. and property manager decides to put them out. Is that landlord tenant or is that still considered? I ran into this a couple of times. I yeah, don't I, don't, I don't recall what it, with what it says in the landlord tenant act. That's a unique situation. I will say, however, from personal experience that I have changed the keys on, on people who, at the, who are at the hotel I worked at um, when they got to a point if we had an instance where it was no longer safe for them to be there and things like that. Um, Cause hotels are treated differently. I, but I, I haven't read the landlord tenant act with that in mind. I don't want to give you legal advice on the spot. Um, and that's fine. Yeah. And but, but about, so, every, about once every six, eight months, it's really something that's okay. That's right. Unfortunately, most yeah. people that are made to leave just leave, but if somebody digs their heels in, is it something we can enforce or is it something that we can step back and tell the property owner, no, they lived here for a year or eight months, you need to do it. Yeah, I don't want to give you that advice. I will say if you're talking about enforcing it, you should talk. I mean, that's something that's going to be dived in. But when you go to actually enforce it and potentially go to have charges or anything like that, the DA's office might have a stronger opinion than I do. Um, well, I mean, we never had to take any, any legal action. Well, so there's always that one time where you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And, the, and, the, and John Adams might have, and their crew might have their own opinions on that. Because you aren't the only municipality that has a, a hotel or motel where that might have happened. They might have a different perspective. Um, but you probably, yeah, I know there are a few that are similar. 
Um, but I also know from my experience that there's people who keep their hotel reservation but don't stay there every night, and that's not, that can become a gray area. Sorry. No, no, no. You, you mentioned that there are there are agencies that will go out and inspect the hotel. I don't. These, these I are don't. All safety and health. Yeah, concerns. I don't know. I don't know who that would be in Berks County. I know that many counties, when I did just a brief look, have have that. In Allegheny County, they had the the Department of Health, their their county health department, come out and do inspections. Worth, but we also worth making we, a phone call. Yeah, yeah, we need to yeah. it might be worth looking just at what the the county offices say. Um, before me, I do any more research. You guys can are, can probably make a phone call over to their office. Mm. Make some phone calls. Make yeah. some phone calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's the case. We can have them send somebody out immediately. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just don't know if they're only going to do it if there's food <clears throat> being served or something. That's my only. But. Yep, Roya. Would this ordinance kind of address the situation where you have a landowner renting property out to somebody? A uh, mobile home is a very unique situation. Would that be a, a single mobile, mobile home or would that be a mobile home park? No, we have multiple. We have what? Multiple. Multiple. So once you get over, I believe, three mobile homes, um, it is considered a mobile home community park, uh, which has its own statute. I believe for them, it's also supplemented by landlord tenant law. The only thing is that I think the only thing that you can't do with mobile homes is you have to be really careful when you evict somebody because it's seasonal. It's much more difficult to move a mobile home or kick somebody out from the mobile home in the winter, considered inhumane to do that without so much notice. So I'm not sure. I think I don't see why it would be an issue. We would just need to make it very clear if it's a single mobile home on a property it's the only one and it's not a park then it's uh, it's not governed by that act and it would be considered a traditional landlord tenant relationship yeah and i think there's because i had looked into this yeah. briefly in the, the course of something else that i think there's some some differences on whether it's a permanently affixed mobile home versus not a permanently that, affixed that might have more of a yeah. guideline of how, what inspections they've done because there's a lot more mobile homes in first time than you'd realize yeah, yeah. So they'll probably probably have a better perception of what's been included, what hasn't. And Roy, if there's any like I can talk to you after the fact. If there's anything that is particularly jumping out in your mind, I can kind of jot that down and and bring that into the mix for looking too. Okay. Next, if we don't have anything else on the rental inspection yeah, ordinance at this time, yeah. thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Of course. Uh, is the winter snow removal. It's time to start thinking about getting the truck ready. So uh, Butch, Leon, um, sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'd like to take maybe a, a Saturday. I'll see what work, works for best for both of you. See if we can get Kevin or Dave or any of the other road crew to come out, get the trucks out, make sure the wiper blades are, are nice, are, have been replaced, that the tires are in good shape, that we have all the chains that we need, that we have the plows on, and just get everything ready for winter. Um, we still have plenty of salt and plenty of cinders so we're good there but we got to get the trucks yep and we have plenty of cinders yep yeah we're we're well stocked we just got to get the trucks ready to to use it should it should it be needed okay um aside from uh, yes kelly when you're snow removal i if i recall you have new or additional employees helping with that yes yeah there were two people that were added um, so are you having any meetings with them regarding where the turnarounds are where the th that's lines that's what we're hoping to do at, at that one is to kind of coordinate because i know there's kind of a i'll say de facto way of doing the turnarounds and one of the things that i want to get together and i've started putting together is uh, kind of a road binder if you will of um, here's all the stuff we have. Here's generally what we need in terms of materials and salt and cinders on an annual year to help kind of keep track for, for forecasting purposes. Here's a map of the township. Here's the routes that like if you're in the little truck, this is generally what you take. If you're in the big truck, this is what you take. Here are the turnaround points. Here are the, the, the township lines. Trying to get that mapped out so that the level of coordination that we've had um, could possibly be better. And if we have different fresh faces on the road crew, that we don't have to reinvent the wheel, that everybody kind of knows how to do things. 
So that's very much the intended purpose of that. And bonus points, if we can get somebody who knows how to drive the grader at that, that same weekend, having them maybe give a kind of a tutorial on how to do that for some of the, the gentlemen on the road crew who don't know how to drive the grader. Um, cause I think there's like really one person, maybe two that know how to drive that. Yeah. There's one person that knows how to drive it really well. I think there's another one who knows how to drive it, but bottom line is that's a piece of equipment that we tend to use, but it's, so it's very niche. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you do get that action yeah. plan together, can you get me a copy mm -hmm. so John has a copy of it? Yeah, it's, just in case something it's, it's loose happens. right now, yeah, but it's... Um, whatever you could find. That's what he knows and understands the yeah. roots, so he could have some big idea. Of what I mean, ideally, it. I'd like to have John uh, yeah, present. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Kelly, wrong, so. the goal, whether it's the roads or the accounting or anything else is to get kind of a, I'll, I'll say a cheat sheet together. So that way, whether it's me on the board or Irene or Jim or Butch and Leanne on the road crew, we don't have people having to just kind of reinvent everything every single time there's yeah. a changing of hands. We want to make sure that I, you can see, okay, this is how it was done. May not be the empirically best way to do it for the rest of time, but you at least have a reference point that you can say, okay, this is when, when the snow starts flying, this is what we need to do. We're, we're, we're just trying to come up with best practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so kind of independent of who's on the. Yeah. And, uh, right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what we're storming out. Right. Yep. Well, I'm, I just want to make record mm -hmm. when you found Richland Road, you need to turn around and come back Richland Road. There's too much wind blowing and too much time in between if you're going up another way down K30 or something. Yeah. So that's all give you kind of a spoiler. One of the things I wanted to bring up in the comments section, we don't have to do it this month, but I still would like to get a couple of rolls of like snow fence and some stakes because there are some spots like along school road that are notoriously bad for blowing shut. So we, there are, uh, I know we have, we have some reflective. Do we, did you find them? Oh, they're over there. Okay. So I, I thought we didn't have any, so maybe scratch that, but um, cause I know I, I had brought this up when Peter Wallace was on the board and I kind of got universally shut down, but well, I, we can't put snow fence up on private property. If it's in the right of way, then you can. Yeah. yeah. That's, I wouldn't be putting it on private property, Just but right away, that. there are some spots like on school road. And I think there's a couple spots on like Sheridan. Well, I know um, most of our roads run north and south and they all blow shut. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we obviously wouldn't do all of it, but there are some strategic points that we know like just from the road crew talking and being out a couple of times myself. Well, you're where, too young to know this, but when I was a kid, there were snow fences all over the place. Okay. Well, that's a, a good work. We're returning to our basics. Yeah. Um, but there's a couple of spots that I know of that would benefit tremendously from it where yeah. they've been out and they said like, I can't see where the road stops yeah. and starts because it just blows shut as soon yeah. as you plow it. Yeah. So I guess on that same note, can we start an inventory process? Yes. So we need to... Butch, I, I need you to help out with inventory of, of things that we have and to explain to me and we'll start keeping a database in the computer so that when we're looking for something, we know whether we should or shouldn't have it. So that's something we need to start keeping track of. So this way we know how to adjust to the budget for yeah. supplies that are needed. So even like, and we had started doing this, I've got yeah. some of the information for like those an air compressor out there, but even simple things like wrenches, excuse yeah. me knowing how many wrenches we have. Like, yeah. We don't have to necessarily serialize each one, but no. knowing that we have a, a set of crescent wrenches, we have this, that, and the other thing is gonna be helpful because sometimes there's there's a lot of things out there. Yeah. It's very easy to, to not be able to find something when it's yeah. still there. Um, so, um, yes, Roy. That's that's the goal because we have a list of farmers from last year and Mervin sometime between now and probably within the next like three to four weeks I'm going to give you a call to make sure that we have the the updated list of any of the farmers um, simply so that we're we're ready to go in that front we had to to institute that I think once this last this last winter but um, we want to make sure that they're ready as well. Did they ever get the lines painted on the road? They started line painting today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah 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 now this is something the the line painting and, and kelly just as an update for you they started painting today they're going to be doing they're going to be doing more tomorrow that we were um really kind of just subject to the schedule they didn't have a hard date that they could give me but they said like i'll call you when we're in the area and they happen to be in the area 
so hopefully we'll have that done tomorrow, but that's a total of 14.6 miles of painting, uh, double yellow from 422 all the way to the Womelsdorf line, uh, white outside lines, again, also from 422 all the way down, uh, two sections of Smaltz Road, um, a section of Reichert, and I believe there's another one. I can pull up the list, but they're, they're going through and doing the whole thing, uh, along with uh, three sets of crosswalks uh, on Main Street and two down by Stonecroft. So they're going to put white lines on They are. Sites. Yes. Yes. Quick question. Mm -hmm. You know, coming in 422 to turn into Statue Road, mm -hmm. that is really difficult. Yeah. Can something be done there? So we're repainting lines on that specifically to help. Um, we've gotten into some signage related debate in the past with PennDOT because it's kind of the, the difference between the PennDOT road and our road. Um, so there's some things we can do with signage. There's some things that we can't do with signage, but bare minimum, the hope is because the lines there are really, they're really poor right now, basically to the point of you can't see them. Um, so having the lines there should help drastically. And then if we have to go further, We'll look and see if there's anything that we can do in terms of visibility, like if it's a situation where we have to go 50 feet up the road or something like that before we place a sign. We'll look at maybe doing that, putting some sort of signage there, whatever is applicable. Um, same thing, not related to like the signage or the safety thing, but around the speeding. Uh, I'm still looking for um, companies that would be able to do the, the rumble strips. Uh, one of the thoughts that we had is people tend to just fly off the highway and keep speed as they go through town. Um, putting in some rumble strips as you exit the highway so that you have that kind of auditory signal of, hey, I need to slow down. And hopefully all the all the stars align in terms of the, the posted speed limit signs, the, the slightly narrower uh, outside white lines for the lanes, uh, that you really kind of get the hint that you need to slow down. So well, you got to try everything you can. <laughs> um, Oh, uh, that's, that's actually one of the things uh, that I'm going to bring up also in the comments. We got a late addition to the agenda and I'll touch on that more. But uh, one of the things that we had asked at a, a prior meeting was to do the studies around if we could put stop signs in anywhere on Main Street. So more to come on that in a minute. But uh, yeah, so I'll keep, I'll keep everybody posted on a, a tentative date. I'll workshop it with the, word, the, the road crew to see what fits their schedules. I'll talk to Mervyn, see what date would be good for the farmers. But the goal here would be to get uh, everybody together for some coffee, some prep on the trucks, and some review of what actually uh, generally is done and by who and where. Hey, yes. I have another question. Certainly. When the snow banks, mm -hmm. if you're going to put them up on the right of your mom, again, it ain't going to work there. Not just on the right of your that's right of your road. Well, I mean, it's better than nothing. Not really. Okay. Not really. I mean, no, I do no, remember too where they put the snow bags and still they were back. Oh, probably 40 feet from like 419 or wherever. That's where the snow drove was, right? At the fence. Okay. So this, this may be something where I, I have to leverage people that have some historic knowledge of this. And if it's a situation where it is on private property, we may have to reach out and see if somebody would be okay with that and get written permission. Um, I, if, if I remember correctly, the whole idea, Harold, you might know, the whole idea of a snow fence was to put it back farther so that the snow piled up at the fence and didn't go on the road. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's, if it's depending on, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can, I can see that. I can understand that. So this, uh, again, this will be something that I'll, 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 I'll talk to you about and Sue, I'll, I'll pick your brain for historic things. Like Butch, Lee, and you probably have some recollection there. Roy, if you have any input, I'd, I'd value that as well. Um, but I know there are some spots that are particularly problematic in terms of stuff blowing shut. And I'd like to see us do something, even if it's something as simple as putting up some snow fence to try to keep that from blowing shut. So, okay. Uh, if we don't have anything else on the uh, winter snow removal, uh, the next item on the agenda is building maintenance. So, Irene, I'll, I'll turn it over to you for that. There is zero updates okay. because no one calls me back. And the only thing I could think is I just got the quail wire in the mail. And there's a couple of contractors in there I didn't contact. So I'm going to be making some more phone calls. Okay. Next is the PSATS life insurance plan. Uh, PSATS is offering a new life insurance plan design starting uh, November 2nd, 2021 with uh, a, an offering of $25,000 term life. 
Uh, currently, we are only enrolled in their disability insurance. And I, Jim, I believe you were going to take a look at that further. Yeah, do you have a copy of that? It's in your packet on the computer. Okay. And I, so, I emailed it to you also. Okay. So and her name is on there. You emailed it to you? I emailed it to everybody. Mm -hmm. I can email it to you again. Yeah, please. It I'm, looks like I this. It. It's, I forwarded her copy to everyone. Oh, yeah, but that doesn't have any specifics on it. Yeah, well, this is all I got. You call her and ask her because yeah. you know the questions to ask. I don't. Okay. Yeah. There's the name is probably on there. There's not a, a high degree of urgency around yeah. this one. So when when you get time, Jim, if it's something that would be worthwhile, we'll look at it. Otherwise, we don't have it right now, so it's really no net loss. <laughs> like it's all volunteer. It's all voluntary anyway. Yeah. I just wanted well, to no, make the sure the township that... would pay for it. So you know, there would be motions and everything to do it. I personally don't need more life insurance. Yeah. So just gonna throw that out there. I'll look at it again. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that there's some things in there that should be in there. Like, is it guaranteed issue? If somebody has health issues, they're not gonna be able to get it. And mm -hmm. that becomes an issue. So I mean, you can always call the PSATs at any point mm -hmm. in time and just talk to them. All right. Yeah. And that, that's it, well, that's who it's for. Yeah. That's yeah. who's really useful. Yeah. yeah. I'll call her. Thank you. Okay. Next is the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, I'll give it a brief synopsis and I'll turn it over to Irene. Uh, $100,848.79 was transferred to the general money market account. Uh, PSATs expects the U.S. Treasury Department to issue final rules during the fall of 2021. Uh, which we are still waiting for. Last I heard, it's now going to be in, it's now April. Oh, they extended it to April. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they've extended their, their deadline for setting the final rules until April of no, 2022. The report is April. The report, the report, report is April. Oh, there is the report April. Yeah. Yeah. We're not, yeah, we yeah. haven't gotten rules. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you guys don't know how to, what you want to do with it. We don't. <laughs> then I'm not drafting a resolution until you tell me what you want to yeah. do with it. If we need a resolution to amend the budgets though. But if you're not using it this year, so we need we, we took in the money this year though doesn't that though. so we need a resolution to amend the budget so you just you just received it you don't amend your budget you just got different income okay okay i don't if you're not using it this year you don't need it you okay need it. so nobody else has adopted a resolution unless they went to go use it okay so okay. Um, until and unless we decide to come up with a plan to use the funds which we're just sitting on because we want to comply with the treasury rules we don't want to have to Spend this money, then oops, give it back. So I put in a, a budget item for the project, mm -hmm. and then for, the, for those funds, and then if you use it, can you use it for next we, year? We do have a a, um, a code for the funds a budget a budget item um, correct for when you do decide it. But yeah, yes. for this year we don't need a resolution. It's if you guys when would, we go to use it when you okay. go to use it. If you already have a budget ready to go, that incorporates the use of those funds. No. Irene, which well, which, for next year, which budget um, item was that? Or well, that's that's an income. We need one for an expense too. Um, so I think we we have to just leave it at that for now because what what she's saying is until and unless we use it, then we we would leave it. So once we create a project, then we would okay do it. I mean, you could have in your budget American Rescue Plan Act, but uh, project right. So instead yeah. of okay, so I I would imagine. We have these engineering um, projects. Part of that project, we could probably possibly write up a supplemental plan saying um, funding will be used from ARP funds to mm -hmm. get onto that, and then we would amend it at that point. But I would have separate documentation that meets the qualifications for usage of the funds. So uh, just for everyone's education, once again, American Rescue Plan has definite structure to what the funds can be used. We can't just use it for anything. They've given some vague guidance, uh, but nothing very specific other than, I want to say, water and sewer projects, uh, culverts, um, anything related to COVID. Um, anything relating to COVID. So in, in essence, some of that stuff can be broad, but we just don't want to be caught using the funds inappropriately because then we'll have to return them. So because there's no urgency um, at this point, we're gonna wait for those final rulings, come up with some tentative plans and then get it clarified as to what we can use. So we've, we've kind of tossed around, we have to upgrade some of our equipment, just off, not so much office equipment, some of our technology equipment. Um, I don't know if anyone heard me talking at the beginning of the meeting 
it'd be nice to have some, we can't do a projector because of the lighting having a screen on the wall. yeah yeah on the wall having a screen over here so that you guys can see the agenda items so you guys can see some of the graphs so you guys can see some of the the data and it just makes it a little bit more interactive you have that aha moment when the information hits your brain because you can visually see it um that's what we want to do to en enhance the the meeting in addition to um having uh, a possibly a larger screen for any zoom participants could be kind of visually apparent when we're having the, the meeting so um that's just one concept again culverts is another concept so we want to comply with the requirements but i'd rather wait until mm -hmm. there's a final ruling so that we know exactly what we can and can't do and then come and draft essentially a proposal as to what we're going to be using the funds for so we have a solid concrete plan so when it comes to audit we have um a trail of breadcrumbs that we followed and complied with so Okay, so the one thing that jumps out at me, at me is I don't think we had the American Rescue Plan money on the draft budget. I, I know I have it on the oh okay. yeah on, so, so on the draft in budget. The draft budget. So we yeah, because we're going to be receiving the we're going to get the second amount. the second yeah. amount. Was it this yeah. a matching amount? Matching amount. Okay, yeah. So I inserted a, a three fifty two item. Yeah. Um, we can. I know I I'll get the I'll get the exact code. Yeah. But uh, that would be the only other change. The balance, the budget is balanced yep. otherwise, with the exception of that that American essentially Rescue found Plan. money with the yep. American Rescue Plan. Yeah. Um, okay. So thank you, thank you for yeah, clarifying yeah, that for us. Yeah, I'm to use it. Yeah. I think the way PSATS put it out, it looked as if we had to have yeah. um, a resolution to accept the funds. Okay. Okay. So we misinterpreted that. Yeah. But thank you. This is why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we went a little, a little off the, yeah. the the path, but that's fine. Um, we'll come back to the the budget thing in a second. Uh, next item on the agenda after the American Rescue Plan is the credit cards. So I'll turn it over to you for some additional items so around the credit cards. We receive the credit cards. Everyone has set limits as to what they can and can't use for. Don, did you come in to sign for your credit cards used for gas mowing? Um, you got yours, and I think I Jim activated Peter, yours. You just have to sign. Yeah, it. Okay. and Sue, and so I'm keeping um just the printout in the office so everyone understands what their limits are we're coming up with operating procedure over how we want those cards to be used so that you you come into the office you take out the credit card you sign a form the credit card is returned you sign the form again and the credit card is kept in the office there should be very little exception to having a credit card on you at night and there's going to be a policy that you're going to uh, receive a copy and sign for that everyone's going to be expected to read and understand and, and sign for it. So we want to be very careful with these cards, very careful with the funds. And um, on my end of things as treasurer, it, it seems to be like no problem. We'll need everyone to turn their receipts, et cetera, et cetera. It, it'll work just like any other purchases, except now you won't have to worry about using your personal funds and getting a check cut to you for those funds. Or having to do something out of petty cash yeah, for certain yeah. things. So we're hoping to, to make things a lot easier and a lot more trackable in that instance so not to mention there are a number of things now that are credit card only oh, yeah. like the uh the one of the insurance CC. policies that we have oh. is credit card only you can't you, yeah. you cannot yes. yeah, yeah you cannot pay by check mm -hmm. like there's no other way to yeah. pay other than by credit card and in the past couple of years one of us has just paid for it and then gotten reimbursed but if you can just directly do it as the municipal entity why not yep so yep so we're so we're going to be creating not to, to make it a burden to anyone but again thinking of how it should be done not because i'm here or peter's here or jim's here is because there should be a, a, a structure a, yeah structure to it and so hopefully that'll carry forward so that there's no sloppiness so that that money is kept track of the cards are kept track of and so that anyone can step into that role and and use the credit cards and understand clearly what what it is and it, it's nothing against anyone it's just to make sure to put in safeguards so that things get done properly. Well, it's it's like the, the rental inspection thing. It's yeah. about making sure that everybody does it right. Most yeah. people will do it right, but you have to make sure that yeah. there's there's requirements around it so that everybody does do it right. Yeah. Okay. Next is the payment of engineer attorney fees uh, for reviews of stormwater plans, et cetera. Uh, currently, we're sending letters out uh, along with an invoice, uh, second invoice, including a 6% increase. Um, we're going to have to adjust this process as we move yeah. through to make sure that it's yeah. exactly what we need. So um, you had sent over a memo from the Barca. So now we have a situation where one individual has not responded to any of our 
um, request for reimbursement. There is a permit still pending in the office, um, but now we're talking about a sum, I want to say it's about $1,200 or more. I think it might've gone up to closer to $2,000. So I'm asking you gentlemen here, if we want to do letters one, two, and three, um, then is your office okay if we ask you to send a letter from your end of things? Um, I guess, how do we want to proceed in the future with this? Do we want the, the four things to be a letter from your office saying it's come to our attention, our client is in the township. And the permit has not been. It's approved, issued. but he hasn't put the letter. Right. Yeah, and you but may. You, you don't have to issue it until you get payment. Well, Courtney, one of the other things we're concerned about is you may have people that might not have a permit withstanding, like right. they've done a project and they just right. So, so, so there's paying. other there's other instances. So I guess is it it's coming up with again an SOP over how we want to proceed with this. Do we want to a one two three? We ask you guys to send a letter with all the information forwarded to you. This, these letters were sent on this date. So we do do collect. We do do some collections, mostly okay. for like trash, no okay. trash within the matter of the municipalities. Uh, which Alicia knows far more about okay. than I do because she handles all that. I would do at least two notice letters. I've done three for this two one or three individual. Two or three, and then you send it over okay. and Alicia in our office okay. can handle it. Um, I can have Alicia kind of give you guys like a summary of what she does. That would be great. Um, but yeah, that's what I, that's, yeah. we can do the collection work. But with just keep in mind that comes out of how right. much it is our, our time kind of mm -hmm. right and, and and we understand that but there's there's i want to say poor behavior by at least three individuals now that work has been done and completed and we have not gotten reimbursed and and you know if it wasn't thousands of dollars if it was you know if there's there's no reason anyone in this room should be paying for work done in anyone else's personal property uh, of course right so i will say the co the collection cost yeah it, all that work is being done by Alicia, who's a great legal, so her hourly rate is less than mine or Andy's. Um, so, and then it's, she does it all the time. So it's all, far more efficient. Okay. <laughs> but she can kind of go over what her process is okay. so you guys are aware of what, in case somebody comes in and talks to you. Like, what the heck? So, yeah, if you, you know, could have her reach out to me or, you know, just send something to, to, right to me. Okay. <laughs> just have, her, have, her, have her reach out to me. This way we could create an SOP mm -hmm. over how we're going to handle this because it's starting to get old really fast. And even though we just started doing this a couple of months ago, and it's just distressing to see a couple of thousand dollars sitting out there and people just, again, ignoring the request and, and yeah. work has been done, but they haven't paid for it. And then the taxpayers are eating this and that's not the way it so, should go. So what do I do if he comes in tomorrow, I'll pick up that permit? Say, no, give that, it to that permit is denied. No. Yeah, you were, we're holding the permit until it's, you've settled out the cost of your prior project. Me, okay, what if I give you some money towards my bill? What well, if you give us all of the money towards yeah, the bill? <laughs> at, this point, it, it, at this point, I would say it's all the money, but again, as a board, we have to decide how we want to handle it. And I'd like Delicious input. Um, it's all, it, yeah. she only is collecting whatever is outstanding when yeah. it comes to if they're willing to pay apart, whatever yeah. is outstanding by the time we get involved, that's what we need to collect. Okay. So, um, I mean, you can always work with somebody who's on a payment plan, but right. that's for you guys to decide. Right. That's a business that's, decision. Right. That is not a, right. yeah. And that's, that's a slippery slope. Cause on one hand, like I like the, the premise of somebody, you know, right. giving somebody an, an out if they're, they're genuinely down on their luck, but I don't want to see us become a bank. That's not, well, that's not somebody, our core business. I think, I think what's reasonable if he comes in and says, look, I can pay half of this, this month and half of it in two weeks, because that's when I get paid. Okay, then you're going to get your permit then, but we're not going to mm -hmm. take collection action that could potentially, you know, be more more right. burdensome on them unless you fail to make those payments. I think that's right. that's very yeah. different. Somebody coming to you and saying, "I can't make this payment because of I lost my job right. unexpectedly mm -hmm. or something," versus right. I just don't want to and I'm ignoring you. Yeah. 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 I, and and so Alicia would would be able to give us a larger input then as far as an even larger bill than that that and when you guys tell us that it's yeah. now at a point where you want to do collections okay. or liens you tell us to do it and then she moves forward okay okay but she could i guess in, in some essences as we'll need input in how we want to structure this so i guess I'll, I'll i'll write up something you know strike one two three you're out it goes to the solicitor and then We'll take and our procedures right. as normal. Well, okay. Always and it. or do we want to accept a 
payment plan over the course of, I would say, maybe give people up to one year, but some of these things can be quite pricey. Or I would say six months. I would be hesitant to do that. I would not mm -hmm. offer a payment plan. If yeah. somebody comes in with an extreme, mm -hmm. like a very serious circumstance, like they apply for this permit, they got the work done. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I like, lost my job or I, I had a death in the family or and whatever. I, and or whatever. Yeah. That's very different from um, someone who just doesn't want to Somebody pay. who decided they wanted to install a patio and not pay you is a very different thing. That's yeah. Kind of and I think that that's probably best left to a case-by-case -case okay. discretion. All right. So so I'll uh, put that in writing. Have Alicia, I'll give them an email. Have Alicia reach out to me. And so, so we could get a little bit of a better feel over what the next steps are. Because it, 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 it's really starting to add up, especially when we're starting to add on that 6%. It, it's just, it adds up. Yeah. yeah I mean, and it, it's my time sending out the letters and the letters and, you know, it's just, come on, be, be a good neighbor, you know. But thank you. Thank you very yes. much. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the subdivision and land development ordinance for uh, and fees and stormwater management ordinance and, and fees. Uh, the subdivision and land development ordinance is from 1991. The fees are from 2005. The stormwater management ordinance and fees are both from 2002. Uh, Jim McCarthy sent over a copy of Why Missing's fee schedule, which was uh, extremely lengthy. So I think there is a little more time needed to, to fully go through that and see where we have direct matches, where we have things that we are not currently billing for where we should be, and seeing what things Why Missing has that are not applicable for Marion Township. So there's some uh, additional work that's needed in that in terms of combing through it. But hopefully for next month's meeting, if not December, we'll have something that we can we can actually vote on. I think you're just politely saying you didn't like my Excel. Uh, no, no I, I liked your Excel <laughs> thing. It's it's still very I much, know, there's it's so still much war and peace. Yeah, um, there's so much on there. Did, did, you, did you look through that, Jim? Did you fall asleep looking at it? Yeah, yeah. It, there's just so much information yeah. it, it is yeah. a lot to try to take in and it's it's a lot that you, you actually have to give serious thought to to make sure that it's what you think it is so okay and the final item on the agenda is the 2022 proposed budget skip to or uh, one of did i mm -hmm. <clears throat> the copier your saturday's agenda instead of tonight's agenda. i didn't think i did Okay, well, the Just copier. The okay, so the copier is the next one. I apologize. I must have the uh, okay. the wrong one open. Let me reopen it. That's the board meeting one. Let me close it and reopen it. It's item number 26. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just, it must have just stuck on the other one. Uh, next item is the office copier. I apologize for everyone that I misled. It's not the last. Um, <laughs> our, our copier has more or less reached its end of life. Uh, we are looking at getting a replacement copier. SOS Business Machines gave us three quotes. One is for a brand new copier at a cost of $3,995, and two are for used copiers. One of them is for $1,500, and one is for $1,900. Um, the used costs for a large multifunction device are, are pretty on point. Um, you're not going to find one for much less than that, short of it having some major problem or uh, reason that somebody is trying to offload it for that cheap. Um, so I'd like to, to get some additional specs from SOS about the, the $1,500 and the $1,900 one in terms of um, usage. I have them and I have them on the Google Drive okay. packet thing. Yeah. Um, I'll look through and make sure that they have everything. Cause one of the things is like, um, like actual, like life hours that the printer has been used, how many pages have been put through it. If it's had any problems, like, with, I don't know that that's, included. yeah, I, I'd want to talk to somebody about that. Cause the, the actual machine specs in terms of like page per minute and color, black and white scanning, et cetera, that's all going to be relatively similar from unit to unit. Mm -hmm. I really want to get a good read on what kind of life these things had. If it was high, highway mileage versus city mileage, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you the $1,500 one, he said they have in stock. They okay. sell a lot of those. Okay. And that's the one that Jim has. Okay. He kept calling it a workhorse. What, do you remember which one it was? Yeah, the, the $1,500 one. Well, but I'm saying like what the make and model was. They're all the Cannon. same. They, they're all the same. Can, they're all cannons. Okay, cannons. Okay. Um, it's number, it's the, I forget how I copy that. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll look it up, but I, I want to talk to somebody from SOS. Number one up here. Okay. 
I'll talk to somebody from SOS because Canon makes good stuff. But again, I want to, I don't want to get something that's been used and abused heavily um, because we're essentially buying into somebody else's problem at that point. We've had no problems. And whenever we have had a, any even minor issue, SOS has been there to back it up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a service very, contract very with them? Uh, we, I think we do have a service contract, but there have been issues where they we'll just come out and take care of it. Okay. He, he did mm -hmm. say uh, they charge by the page. Um, and that's on the sheet too. Okay. Um, it's different for black and white and color. Uh, if we go with a service contract, they'll charge us by the page. We can opt not to go with a service contract and just have them come out and repair it whenever we need it repaired also. Okay, I'll have to throw together a cost benefit analysis of what, what kind of printing we tend to do because we've actually been trying to cut down on the amount of printing. Like with well, us. No, I use that one more. Well, I use the laser more. Yeah. Because the copier so is not hooked up to the computer. Yeah. So. Well, I just meant in, in general, like right now we do everything digitally I mean, I for the most the part. I use the laser all the time. Yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah. I'm the one using the copier more. Okay. So, okay. I mean, you take into account those copies, yeah. you know, shift those copies over to a larger copier. Yeah. Because um, we can get rid of the laser. Um, I'd probably keep the laser just oh, in yeah. case, but... Yeah. But it's more expensive to use that laser than it is to use the copy. Well, yeah. Why yeah. would you want? I mean, we already Red have redundancy. Yeah. <laughs> it's still a working printer. Yeah. Yeah. And printers are notoriously finicky. Mm -hmm. Even when you have a good one, okay. printers like mm -hmm. to do bad things. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. I want to look at that a little bit more, but uh, I'll, I'll make a phone call to them and talk to them about the, the $1,500 one. That's the one that interests me the most. I just want to, again, make sure that we're not getting something that has been heavily, heavily used. We've been talking about this now for a while. Is there, can we make a motion to purchase it if it? If it I mean, do you, do you, do you, do you guys want to authorize? I mean, you I can certainly I do that. I think she needs one. That's up, that's up to you. Yeah. So, so which one did you prefer? I'm okay with the fifteen hundred now. I I don't need bells and whistles. You yeah. know, I I'm, I'm need simple. That I just want a copier that doesn't yeah. have black lines all over it. Yeah. Okay. So well then, Jim or Irene, do you want to make a motion to authorize the purchase of that particular one, subject to? Final review on condition. So moved. Okay, repeat that because I'm. <laughs> okay. Who's uh, motioning? I'll, ma I'll make the motion to authorize the purchase of a new uh, office copier for the cost of $1,500 plus any applicable taxes, uh, subject to final review on condition and specifications. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Well, will they take the old one, though? I think so. I think that's, I, I think hope so. Yeah. Okay, next item on the agenda is a backhoe. Uh, Butch was kind enough to get us three quotes from Wico for used front end loader uh, backhoe combinations. One of them was 49,500. One of them was 43,900. And the other one was 39,500. These are all for used. Um, they will give us 5,000 or would give us 5,000 for our loader and 2,500 for the little John Deere. He got quotes from New Hall or for a new Holland backhoe from Messix for 99,271 and for a John Deere backhoe from Plaster Equipment Co. for 97,900 for the model 310L and 109,900 for the model 310SL and for a new case backhoe from Groff Tractor and Equipment for $119,551. Uh, the higher cost ones are obviously new rather than used. Um, yes. Oh, what was the uh, what was the corrected price on the, the John Deere? No, these are the correct prices. I changed it from Saturday. Oh, okay. I had the wrong well, prices well, on Saturday. Yeah, because I know there was there was some talk about that, but if if it's wrong, the somebody. Three ten SL is one oh nine nine. One oh nine nine. Okay, so that's the three ten L is ninety seven nine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So they are they are correct. Thank you for lodging that just in case. But um John Deere, your and uh some more foodies with the John Deere than the others. You also get a, a better warranty on a, a new yeah, piece of equipment rather than used if you even get one unused. Uh, Roy. This machine that you were going to have a two-inch bucket? Yes. Yes. I was going to say it should, if memory serves me for the specifications. That was one of the, 
the critical things that we wanted was um, the ability to take stuff on and off easily. So. All right, so snow plow over? I don't, no, none of them had a snow plow included. That's something we could, we could ask about, but that would be, I think, just equally as well to get something from. So we need, we need that track in the road for the singer. And well, Butch, to, to Roy's point, it would be useful if we had a plow for it, that when you were done loading up cinders and stuff, especially if it's a quick connect, you could throw a plow on it. So I, I, I get that 100%, but that may be something that we don't necessarily get from Plasterer yeah. or from like John Deere directly, but we, we take and get from the, um, what's, what's that place on Burnville and down in Burnville? That, that's like all they do is snow plows. Yeah. Um, like Burnham. What's it called? Storks. 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 Thank you. Thank I you. I really hoping it was actually going to be called Snow Place. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that might that might be something that would better better serve to say, hey, Storks, we have this piece of equipment. Here's the type of plow that it takes. What are our options? Um, and we may find that we have one of the other because I think we actually at this point we have an extra plow in the mix out there that might even fit on that. Um, and we just, we don't know yet, but, uh, yeah, specifically one of the things that I wanted was the ability to take stuff on and off quick. Um, cause it's, it's involved on the non quick connect stuff. Um, with that said, the, the existing loader that we have has been, um, I'll say much loved for the many years that we've had it, but it's starting to show its age. Um, it's something that, uh, we, we really should consider getting. And the, the way we have things budgeted for capital expenditures next year, we absolutely could finance the cost of one of them. I would suggest the, the 310L or the 310SL, depending on which one we want to go after. It's a cost difference of about $10,000 between the two. Um, the, the XL uh, will have a stronger hydraulic yeah. system. Yeah. Have a whole nine yards towards the, towards the others. Yeah, I'd much rather go with the heavier. Mm -hmm. Buy essentially buy a little more than what you might need because uh, we'll we'll find situations where we need it. I can all but guarantee but, it. You know, if we have to do road work, hmm. we need something. Yeah. So I guess next week uh, I could come down and and uh, call up about financing then. And this way we could uh i think they already they in yeah. the packet there they had financing I details think. in there yeah it comes out to i believe uh the one of them was 18.6 for a year and the other one was like 22 something oh well, uh if, if we want to join there i have to i have to sign that in tomorrow yeah and they're going up to work today. well they were sue talked to them and they were willing to be a little forgiving on the timetable of that because of when we have our meeting if we decided to go that route um well he wants to know by the end of the month yeah, were, i know yeah. i know the end of the month is, is going to be here so really yeah. we would have well, to make it I mean. yeah. if, wait till next week. no no no, no i'm saying like if, if we decided to move forward on this it's not like today's the cutoff for that four percent difference they're not going to hold us to that because of the he situation said he'd that give us some leeway, but yeah i mean he's he he's said by the end of the month right yeah because I told him our meeting was tonight. Yeah. We know we need it. Let's just approve it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to defer to Butch on that one, but I think I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we. I don't have a problem. I, I'm with it. I'm kind of in agreement yeah. with Jim. We we need it. It's. You just tell me where you want me to pay for it. Which which fund? That's all. Yeah, and there's there's things yeah. that we were talking about at the workshop. If we pay a certain way, we could actually potentially get the cost slightly lower because of the way interest yeah. is accrued. Yeah. Um, but even if you want, he said if you want him to come down and explain that to you. Yeah. Because I was only half listening because I'm not involved in that part. Yeah. Of it, yeah. So. I mean, from the from the monetary standpoint, I get that in spades. That's that's an area where I'm more familiar. I have to defer to like Butch when it's things about hydraulics or like some of the options on it. But just the 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 act of setting up payment at certain times so that the interest is in, right. accrued yeah. more payments. or less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, all, all we have to do tomorrow is tell them we want it. Just tell them we want it so they can put it on the on their computer. Mm. So, so I think, I think we need it. Yep. Like, I think it's, it's something that we are overdue for. Um, 
So I think the general consensus is the the three ten SL, which is the hundred nine thousand nine hundred dollar one. Yes. Okay. Um, when do you guys want to take a stab at the motion, or should I do it? You do it. You're better at it. <laughs> um, we just fumble. I'll make a motion yeah. to purchase a John Deere uh, backhoe from Plaster Equipment Co. for one hundred nine thousand nine hundred dollars to be financed. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And I just guess. as a reminder that they are co-stars participating and so are we. Yep. Thank you. Um, so, so are we going to put down a lump sum on this or is it just going to be a monthly? I would say just monthly. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, Roy. Okay. Uh, so it happens to be old John Deere. It's still out there. That's actually, that's the next thing that I was going to talk about is if we're going to recoup any costs, because like WECO had said about giving us an offer as like a trade-in on them. It's very specific on what you can and can't do with municipal property for things like even with trade-ins. Um, our next step would be to figure out what we want to do with that old equipment. And more than likely, we'd want to put it out to bid, which is the empirically the, the most right proper way of offloading an old piece of equipment. Um, I believe Sue, you had said there's a, like a municipid site or something like that, or we yeah, can talk to like what, mm -hmm. some okay, of the other municipalities on what they do. But um, the John Deere guy salesman said that um, that kind of covers the bidding process. Yeah, municipid set up yeah. for a yeah. municipality to do it. It's yeah. only municipalities. Yeah, so there's municipalities and then all those authorized suppliers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. once. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. And, and even that, like I said, that gets a little dicey sometimes because of the way municipal property works is it's supposed to be by bid. Um, but there, I mean, uh, there's most of my municipalities use municipid to yeah. get rid of stuff. They well, also, meant, like, will, just they'll also look for stuff on there if they only need it like once a year. Yeah. Sometimes they'll find something that turns out another municipality doesn't need. So yeah. It's not a good, it's not a bad thing to get the account set up. Yeah. So once, okay. well, I mean, we can start getting the account set up, but once we, once we have the other loader, our next step would be to put the, the old backhoe and the old John Deere that we're, we're not actively using up for bid. Probably won't get it until spring. I mean, it's, it's not hurting anything, but. There's stuff to Yeah. Hmm. Until until we have the new one, yeah. We won't see this till March or April. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a backlog on getting that delivered. We're not going to get rid of that right before like the the winter season, and then not have any backhoe. Um, the concern is around the longevity of that one. That it's it's starting to to show its age a little bit. So we we obviously want to replace it before it becomes a huge problem. I mean, if we have the space for it, I, I don't think we're going to get all that much for it. So that's something that we as a, a board can talk about. Because um, like WECO only offered us 5000 for it. And granted, 5000 is 5000 But in the grand scheme of a piece of equipment like that, it's not much. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to keeping it. I'm not opposed to putting it up on bid. Um, really, we have two functional things that we have to, to keep in mind. The the upkeep of that second piece of equipment to make sure that it doesn't degrade or deteriorate faster and storage. If we have somewhere that we can keep it rather than just putting it outside. Um, so, it, doesn't it currently uh, need repairs? Say again? It currently needs some repairs, doesn't it? It, it works, but I have a feeling there's some things that probably, uh, if they're not ready to be repaired, they will be soon. I know the, uh, I think the accelerator likes to, to stick on that one. Um, Roy, I, I couldn't hear you. I apologize. There was enough background noise. Of... <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the grader actually does get used more than you'd think um and it's something that i'd like to see us use more for certain things but we don't have many people that know how to use the the thing because it's kind of a behemoth but, like three or four Good. yeah um whereas i think the greater is like one <laughs> so there's room for improvement there uh with that said i think We've taken all the action that we need to at this point. We authorize John Deere to move forward on the purchase. We can set up a municipal account, whether we use it or not. Doesn't really hurt us one way or the other. And if, yeah, I, I mean, I can. I'll write it up so I can keep it in mind. 
pull where it might. I'll I'll take a look to, at it too. Just yeah. just to... but I want to I want to keep it in the the uh, binders that we have in there. This way, we could write up a list of how to do so this. Who's going to call Todd tomorrow? Yeah. Rock, rock paper scissors. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, if, if you can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want him to come down and explain that? I mean, if you talk, anytime he comes down and talks I mean, to Butch. I can say, um, you can pass on my cell phone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Okay. Now, the last <laughs> item on the agenda is the 2022 proposed budget. Um, so the budget is printed out. It's on the table that was circulated with the rest of the board based on some input on the workshop. Uh, the only thing that we would need to change before it goes out to advertising the is the ARP funds. That was the one thing that just as a, uh, a an oversight on my part, there's a total of $201,697.58 that we would see from the money that comes in this year, mm -hmm. as well as the ARP payment for 2022. Mm -hmm. So that would be an income uh, in the 352 code of account range. Mm -hmm. Uh, that would be added. That would be the only difference in the budget from what was previously presented and what individuals in the audience have versus the, the actual budget. Um, with that removed, the budget balances. There was a, a surplus of $204 and some change. Uh, otherwise, it is a pretty much one-to-one. -one. Um, there were some adjustments. We had to do some tweaking from a prior year. Um, we're expecting a reduction in real estate taxes of around $7,000, a little more than $7,000. Um, which brings down our, our revenue in, in kind, as well as the slight difference in liquid fuels turn back. Um, otherwise, we've tried to keep it relatively the same. Um, we have budgeted for the, the various things that we need. We're keeping pretty standard on some of the things like the interest for uh, the checking and the savings account. Uh, we were slightly below on the one, slightly up on the other. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of comes out in the wash. Um, one of the, the principal differences from 2021 to 2022, though, is we are starting to account for some of those fees that we have not previously collected, um, hoping to get to a more one-to-one -one relationship between some of the things like the stormwater fees and the reimbursements. Um, that way, we're able to more easily balance the revenue to the expenses, especially when it comes to things like the, the SEO fees, as we start to do the pump outs and inspections and things like that. We'll have money going out to pay the SEO and money coming back in to, to offset that for, again, almost a one-to-one. -one. Um, I guess the only other things worth really highlighting is we are increasing based on the wages because we had some, uh, I'd say, higher than normal wages for some of the road crew related stuff this year and are anticipating more. Well, well, um, we face that. Yeah. I think we under budgeted yeah. for last year based on COVID. Yeah. And it really wasn't a reflection over what an average year is. Thank like. you. That's yeah. a that's a much better way of saying yeah. that. Um, bottom line is we're we're still okay on the budget because we had things that were much lower, but we ended up having more work done this year from a road crew standpoint than we were origin originally anticipating. So we're we're going back to a more 2019 amount, which is twenty five thousand rather than the like ten thousand that was was budgeted. Um, Otherwise, we've tried to keep it the same. We're keeping the millage at 2.0. We're not raising taxes. Um, and we are continuing to undercut the streetlight fund slightly to bring down some of the surplus in that account. Um, based on the just general review from this and the discussion on Saturday, um, Jim, did you have any questions around the budget? Irene? No, I've just got a headache about it. But <laughs> yeah. Just um, trying to keep track over it. Okay. Uh, Irene's done a fantastic job with yeah, this. She should know. be congratulated. Yeah, the, <laughs> a lot of hard work. The state of QuickBooks is tremendously better than it was. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, so with that said, we are still budgeting for certain things, um, like emergency management. It's right. not something we've had to use in the past. Uh, the community association, we're leaving the, the $10,000 in there. But if there is a, a project involving the playground or something similar that we can, yeah. we can allocate money to them. Um, we did that the one year with the some of the benches and the, the tables and things like that. Um, so we'll make sure the money is there. Um, side note, one of the things that if we are actually talking about any sort of building relocation, it might be worthwhile for us to have a good solid discussion with the community association about if we are actually seriously considering some sort of move, maybe not trying to do the playground 
that year. I, I'd hate to see us put a bunch of time, oh, yeah. effort, and, and money into the playground and then have the building move sites. But that might be a discussion for one of us to go and, and have with the next community association for just like general forecast and plan and keep fundraising, keep doing what you're doing. But it may be it may be a situation that we need to pivot a little upon. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, um, if you're both comfortable with the budget, uh, with the addition of that American Rescue Plan, I've got uh, the code in there. yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll update the code in there. Yeah, um, I'd like to to motion to advertise the the budget. Read your read your agenda. That's the way you need to motion. Okay, thank you, Sue. Um, Okay, motion to accept and advertise the budget in the Reading Eagle and make it available for public inspection. Second. Do you want to state all of the millages so I can put that on the municipal tax sheet? Sure. Do I have the street light in front of me? Okay, so you want the street light and the, and the uh, just the general millage, right? And then if you're putting the um, oh yes, on that, I have to yes know that yes too. yes yes thank you. Um, okay, so the proposed millage for 2022 is 2.0. The street light cost per foot is 65 cents, and the uh, proposed uh, addition for the on lot management program is $50 annually for affected properties. Okay. So Peter made the motion. Was there a second? Yeah. Okay. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> it's, like, it's been a long day. <laughs> The answer to about anything. <laughs> okay. That concludes the main items for the agenda. We'll move into supervisor comments. Um, I have a couple of comments. The first one is the police report. Um, relatively quiet month. There were actually no parking tickets and no warrants, no traffic warnings, no non traffic citations, and only three actual citations issued. So it seemed like uh, August was a, a relatively quiet month. For, for policing in Marion Township. Um, and I'm, that's, that's actually, that's the next thing. Um, and uh, the other thing that I have uh, is the traffic planning and design. We got this very late in the day today from McCarthy Engineering. Uh, this is something that we had asked for a couple, couple of months back about getting the preliminary work done to do a study for putting in uh, a stop sign or stop signs on Main Street. Um, this, says four maximum. There's really only three that I can think of. There's really one that I'm specifically interested in, but the concern here is it's very, very, very specific uh, on what you have to meet in terms of requirements for a stop sign. And the concern that I have is if we do one intersection and it doesn't, doesn't make it, it may be that one of the three does meet the requirements, but we have no way of knowing short of doing the study. And it's going to be um, just cheaper by a slight economy of scale to do the study all at once for the three intersections rather than doing them piecemeal over like a three-year span. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have to do anything with it right this second because we would have to amend the, the agenda in order to include this. Um, but for both of your consideration for next month's meeting, this is something that I, I still think would be advantageous, mm -hmm. especially around the speeding that happens down Main oh, Street. absolutely. Um, so the the three spots that I had identified as being potential candidates is uh, Sharp in Maine, Church in Maine, and I believe it's Marion in Maine. Let me let me pull up the map. I always mix up those two roads. Okay. See if we had a TV, you could see what he's doing. Yeah, so, so you, could, you could actually watch me scroll in yeah. real time. <laughs> so the three intersections were Sharp, Water, and Church. Yeah, it would be this one, 
the one immediately to that side and the one immediately to that side. Obviously not looking to put a stop sign at each, but again, the requirements for putting a stop sign in are very, very specific. Um, and whether it's at Church Road, which already has stop signs the, the other direction, uh, Water Street, which has pretty poor visibility as you oh pull, pull out, or Sharp, really any one of the three of them would benefit, in my opinion, from having oh, yeah. a stop sign there. <laughs> so unfortunately, we have to cast a relatively wide net because it, it may work in one spot, but not in the other. And um, unfortunately, it's, again, it's pretty specific. So there's not a real great way to know short of the study. Before, before you said it. Mm. Yeah. And then you <laughs> that sign or stop sign ahead. Yeah. And, but we're going to be painting in crosswalks anyway. Yep. Yeah. We're, so, we're putting crosswalks right, in. That's... And we could have the sign that says crosswalk ahead. Mm -hmm. Can we write down slow, slow, slow down your speed, crosswalk ahead? Yeah. Yeah. We don't even have to put them yeah. in by ordinance. Those are yeah. just supporting other yeah. signage. Um, and the, I mean, there, there's actually, there's two things. I shouldn't say the last thing. The other thing is I included you guys on a, an email today that I sent to uh, MSI about some signage, okay. buying some additional 25 mile per hour street signs, uh, a couple of pedestrian crossing signs, like the, the ahead sign that mm -hmm. you usually have to pair with the pedestrian crossing, uh, as well as a couple of stop signs ahead uh, signs for the, the, the homeowners that had uh, mentioned that there are people chronically blowing through the stop signs at, at Stouchburg Road and Wintersville Road. Um, that I'd like to place some stop sign ahead okay. signage on that, like whatever the, the required distance is up the road. But um, that came out to, I believe, like $788. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, just by the, the cost of it, usually I'll just authorize signage because it's small amounts, but... Uh, that's, that's like almost um, double. Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, Sue, I'm, I hate to do this to you, because of the, the cost on it, I'm going to have to amend the agenda in order to to buy that um yeah um, so i just have to make a motion to amend the uh, agenda to include the the cost of signage as one of the items if i'm not mistaken courtney is that right courtney i think is deep in thought i can i can also wait too. Yeah, let's wait. Let's okay. Wait. So, Courtney, from a from a standpoint, is the roadmaster allowed to authorize the purchase of the signage and then have it ratified at a future meeting? Yes. Okay. In that case, that's what we're doing. Put it. Yeah. yeah. Put it. Yeah. Put it on the agenda for next month. Yeah. Um, street signs. Street signs. Yeah. And uh, the the cost. Especially, especially if there's a risk the cost is going to go up, or if it's an emergency, then order and ratify. Yeah. yeah. So, like the cop, like not the copier, but if the backhoe was going to go up. A ridiculous amount but you guys act so why don't we put up a stop sign and ask for forgiveness later too well you can put up a stop sign but it's not legally enforceable and yeah. if somebody does have an accident there because of not having a stop sign then it gets into weird horrible hot water with us for having illegal signage otherwise that would be perfect we just put it up and but anyway uh, the last thing that I have on the agenda is the... Uh, As usual, this is going to take forever. Uh, That's the, the, my the wheels, concern. Unfortunately, the wheels of government spin slowly. Very, down. very slow. Um, <laughs> with that said, the last thing that I have is some general announcements for the MTCA. Uh, the MTCA is holding a movie night uh, at Marion Township Playground. Um, Don, what night is that? So I actually don't see the date in the, the meeting minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so stay tuned. Kelly. Kelly. Oh, okay. Okay, so I have here is a movie night at Marion Township Playground, so I figured I'd... We were making Okay. Well, then stay tuned for that one. Um, okay. At some point. Uh, at some point, yeah. Um, okay. Um, they are still selling Justino sandwich tickets for $6.50 each. Uh, you can see any number of the MTCA reps for that. The sandwiches are quite good. I highly recommend it if you're, if you're interested in that sort of thing. And the next car show will be held on Saturday, May 14th, 2022 uh, on Main Street. So there's some things that we're going to have to do in terms of road closures and detours and everything else closer to time. But uh, I, I think we're all excited to, to have the, the next one of the car shows. Um, did you guys get your, did you set up uh, something with Amazon Smile for donations yet? Okay, so once you have that, please let us know because then we could pass that along too. Yeah, I, I buy tons of stuff on Amazon. So yeah. if you guys have some sort of kickback from that, you can count on me yeah. to, to chip me. in on that. I'll let my family know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
because that, that could uh, pass through uh, word of mouth pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's it for me for comments. Irene, do you have any? Um, thank you, Sue, a million times for everything that you do. Sure. And Courtney, thank you again for being here and thank you for getting back to us and all these questions that we have and of course. the more questions that we're going to have. And so. Happy to help. Cool. Thank you. Jim. Nothing. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just as a thank you, Jim. I completely lost sight of that. As a reminder, Halloween is on Sunday, the 31st. The trick or treating hours in Marion Township are from 6 to 8 p.m. Courtney, any comments for you? Uh, no, just continue to send anything you guys need from our office to me. Um, it looks like I'll be covering you guys at least through January. Okay. Um, and, but Andy is being kept aware of what's going on. He's home. So yay. Uh, but yes, just keep using me for now. And I've been great to work with you guys. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, we and hope Andy, we And hope if he I'm out of the office, um, Alicia's your second contact. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, any comments for you? You want to do the engineer report? Um, or not? Hold on. Oh, what's with the person that's in violation of the stormwater? Uh-huh. Didn't we have someone who ignored the stormwater? Yeah. Didn't yeah, they didn't put it in. Yeah, someone didn't put it in. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on here. They included yeah. permits this time. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff on there, and I think we've covered the key points for that. The big one was the GP7 for that Jacob Weiss culvert. Okay. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. There's the email. So yeah. Somebody was supposed to put it in. Yeah. Storm Storm did not. Yeah. If anybody wants a copy of the report, they can ask for it. Yeah. Oh, this one. That didn't. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think they're including the comments now. So now what? I think, they're, they're now um, so I think we need to talk to McCarthy Engineering about enforcement on that. Yeah. Gonna make them put it in. yeah. I mean, that they're going to have to. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, any other comments, sir? Nothing for me. Okay, in that case, I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 9.22 p.m. Is there a second? Yeah, it is. is there second. A second. Jim? Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned, thank you, everyone.